What you won't hear me do is argue facts. Facts of this, facts of that. I'm not gonna waste your time doing that. I've chosen to speak from the heart. All right, good morning, everyone. Court will call State of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please. Yes, good morning, Judge Schuepper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Woodshell appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning, sir. Your name for the record, please. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. All right, the record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. Your objections noted for the record, the appearance as I've just indicated stands. The only thing uh, housekeeping to clean up, Your Honor, is Exhibit 15, which was uh, the victim map that we had first introduced through Detective Casey, and uh, you admitted it subject to uh, proof of all of the events that are depicted on the map. Um, any position on that, sir? To it being a, to it being admitted? Yes, fully received. I had received it subject to foundation, and the state's set forth its position. Do you have any position on that? Yeah, I object, I object to it. I don't see the relevancy. All right, your objection is noted, uh, and Exhibit 15 uh, is received. And uh, one other housekeeping matter. Last week, I believe it may have even been on Thursday, we had a discussion with Mr. Brooks outside the presence of the jury in which several broad topics were discussed. One of them was Mr. Brooks had indicated he did not have a pretrial offer from the state. Uh, we would ask the record to reflect uh, that afternoon we did provide him again with a written copy of our pretrial offer and that was placed with his materials on the table. I just wanted that in the record, please. Uh, I object to that. I don't, if it was with my paperwork, I haven't, I haven't seen it. It was specifically one of the papers, sir, that you left in the bullpen area that on the next morning, on Friday morning, I made a record of providing back to you. So it was provided to you twice. Well, I haven't seen it. You want to yeah. put the offer on the record? Yes. Give me one second, Your Honor. So what's the significance of it being on the record? If, um, okay. So that you are fully aware of it, sir. It was provided to you, but uh, you're in the kidney, you haven't read it, so I want them to make a record of it. The significance would be, I suppose, if at any point you wanted to change your plea, you could do that based upon the pretrial offer. Well, in any event, I accept for value and return for value that document whenever I'm, whenever I see it. Your Honor, this would be a perfect time to address the subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven on the record and must be Mr. proven Brooks, by the prosecution. I issued, we are not going to address that. I issued a written decision last week if you disagree with that, then you can take that up to a higher court. But I issued a written decision. I'm not addressing that any further. It has yet to be proven on record. Mr. Brooks, my written decision is the decision of this court. Has it, been proven, Go ahead. Has it been proven on record that you have subject matter jurisdiction? Because it has yet to be proven. Mr. Brooks, your position is simply not correct as a matter of law. I explain that. You prove it lawfully by law. And I issued the decision. You might be confusing subject matter jurisdiction with venue, which is why I commented on that last week. Absolutely and There not. has been evidence received regarding venue. So I'm going to turn back to Attorney Opper. She's going to, to make a venue, record Your of Honor. the pretrial offer. I'd ask that you not interrupt. Thank you. Your Honor, the offer that was dated July 5 of 2022 reads as follows. Plead to counts 1 through 67 in the information. The penalty enhancers on all counts will be struck. Counts 68 to 83 will be dismissed and read in. The state will recommend six consecutive life sentences on counts 1 through 6. The state will recommend unspecified prison on all other counts. The defense is free to argue. This pretrial offer was conveyed to his prior counsel on or about the July 5th date, and there in fact had been a earlier offer as well that had been relayed uh, prior to the preliminary hearing or the filing of the information back in January of 2022 that had also been uh, conveyed to his defense counsel at the time. All right, thank you. So why haven't I been informed of that? All right, Mr. Brooks, that is not a topic we are going to take up. Any further, I just wanted the record to reflect that that offer was conveyed to you. It wasn't conveyed um, to me, Your Honor. This is uh, the first time I'm hearing of it. So if it was con conveyed to my former it's counsel. Not something I'm going to, uh, it's not something I'm going to further address, sir, unless you indicate to me that you would like to take advantage of the pretrial offer. 
by changing your pleas to either guilty or no contest to counts one through 67 and submit the appropriate paperwork. I'm guessing that's not what you want to do. And in all respect, Your Honor, I don't think it's fair that you should assume what I want to do or not or what I don't want to do. Yes, sir. We'll continue with the uh, testimony today. Um, I'm not going to take up subject matter jurisdiction. I've issued a written decision. Is there any other preliminary topic from either yeah. party? Is that, is that decision verified proof that subject matter jurisdiction exists? Because it has yet to be proven on the record. All right. Your objection is noted. Please bring the jury out. Your Honor, is that the answer? Mr. Brooks, I issued a written decision. That's and, your answer. And, what's that? and what is the written decision in entail? Uh, I set for value in return for value the document that I have not seen. What does it entail, Your Honor? I'm not going to read it into the record at this point. It is part of the record. It's a final order if for purposes of If it's part of the of record, appeal. why can't it be read into the record right now? Sir, is it verified of proof of is it verified proof of subject matter? It's not something that needs to be verified. Your it it, de it, it has to be verified right. by the prosecution. Right or is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer that question or verify proof of subject matter jurisdiction? Sir, I have no such agreement with you. Just so would it be proven? the law requires, that doesn't oh, make it true. All right, the show me coming lawfully out. Law. I'll ask for the jury, please. Show me by lawfully law that you have subject matter jurisdiction because it hasn't been proven on the record. It has yet to be proven for the record. Let the record reflect that. The record will not reflect that, and the jury will disregard the comments currently being made. The record just should made reflect by that. Mr. Brooks. You have to put it on the record. Otherwise, that would be tampering with the record. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Attack the agreement at 840. Please disregard the most recent comment Tacket by Mr. Brooks. It's not 840. evidence in this proceeding. Thank you, Judge. The state calls Sean Backler. No subject matter jurisdiction. Sir, uh, on November 21 of 2021, where did you live? Jackson, relevancy. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Around the uh, time of 4.49 p.m. on that afternoon of November 21, 21, where were you? Jackson, relevancy. Overruled. Did you attend the parade, sir? No, I didn't. Relevancy. Okay. Overruled. Around 4.49 p.m., what happened, sir? Jackson, leading a witness. Um, overruled. Uh, you heard a noise and you went to explore, correct? Correct. And you saw a person there? Yes, I did. And you questioned that person for being there, is that right? Jackson, uh, leading a witness. And uh, maybe you were cursing at him, is that what you're suggesting? Jackson, I, leading a witness. Overruled. I think I dropped an F-bomb on him. Why? Jackson. He's trespassing. Okay. The person that you was an objection, but it's overruled. Did you you said uh, red top? Red shirt. Red shirt. What kind of shirt? Um, overruled. Then his answer may stand. To your way of thinking, was he dressed appropriately for the weather? Objection. Uh, Leading the witness. Overruled. Relevancy. Objection. Overruled. Relevancy. Objection. overruled. When he came out from the garage, he, he was asking if I could call him an Uber. Okay. So you spoke with him a little bit. Objection. Leading. Um, sustain this to the form of the question, please rephrase. The person that you're describing for us, sir, do you see him present in the courtroom here? He's sitting over there with the mask on and in the suit. Okay, I'm going to ask the defendant be instructed to remove the mask. Mr. Brooks, please remove the mask. And if he would look at the witness, please, Your Honor, with his head down, it's not to assist him. Right, Mr. Brooks, please uh, look up and look at the witness. Look at the witness, please. Thank you. Is that the man that you're describing that was in your backyard that you spoke to? Objection. Yes. Leading. Is it up? Yep, it is. Okay. Do you see uh, this photograph, sir? Objection. And overall? Yes. I'd like you. Is there a person shown in the photograph? It's Jackson. the defendant. Leading. Um, overruled. It's not leading. You may answer. It's the defendant. Is this consistent with his appearance when he presented himself to you on your uh, driveway that evening or uh, backyard garage area? Objection. Leading. Overruled. It, it is consistent. Okay. Move to admit and permission to publish 171, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. And, sir, it's a little hard to tell in the photograph, but was the T-shirt he was wearing a short sleeve or long sleeve, if you remember? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Ultimately, did he leave your property? Objection. He accident. Answer. Lifted his shirt up and said he was unarmed. Okay. Had you asked him about any weapons? I Objection. No. Relevancy. Overruled. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. And I object to being called that name for the record. Do you recall giving a statement to a, a officer, Probst? And you, you did talk to an officer that, that night. So it was uh, a conversation on the non-emergency uh, line. Would that be fair to say? 
Do you recall the description that you gave at that time? That uh, you were either black, Latino, Who's you? or mixed. Who is you? So it would be fair to say you didn't know at the time? I was giving a general description. So it would be fair to say that you weren't sure? I was positive it was you. Who is you? You. I'm looking at you. And how did you come to that conclusion, the, the you conclusion? I'm looking at you. How did, you come, how did you come to that conclusion? Did you... What conclusion? Can you, you restate the question? You're saying, you're saying that you gave an, a description on the non-emergency phone line, correct? It was on a non-emergency line. So it would be fair to say at that time, you had no name or knowledge of who uh, the person was in your backyard. Would that be fair to say? And so how can you say who... The, how can you say you then if you had no idea? I'm looking at you. You were the guy. And how did you come to that conclusion? Is it possible you saw something on the news? No, I had no idea who you were. Interesting. Do you recall giving a description of approximately 5 feet 9 and 160 pounds? Yeah, something like that. Something like that, or would that be accurate? I didn't have a tape measure out. Would it be fair to say that since you keep identifying me as you, would it be fair to say that I'm not 5'9 nor 160 pounds? Would it be fair to say that I'm not 5'9 and 160 pounds? Does it look like I'm 5'9? Does it look like I'm 160 pounds? Objection. Grounds. It's irrelevant as to his appearance today, just like his hair isn't in dreadlocks today. <coughs> Objection. Question. Grounds for the sustain. You also said that, well, the narrative in the report said that the, the individual was later identified. Would that be fair to say? And so would it also be fair to say that because the, uh, the individual was identified later, that that's how you came to the conclusion of who it may have been in your yard? Objection. I think that's Grounds. a statement, Your Honor. He's, again, reading a police report. That's, that's a question. Not authored by this witness. It's beyond the scope of the witness's knowledge. It's actually it's, the report that Mr. he Burns, gave. I've heard enough that the objection is sustained. You Did you follow the investigation after you had given the, uh, the report on the non-emergency line? So you, you made reference to it was kind of hard not to see it on the news. Would that be fair to say? It was all over the news. And would it be fair to say that from those news reports, you gained additional information that you didn't have that night? Actually, what I did is went into work the next morning and pulled up the police report on, on the internet, and there you were in a so, mugshot. And I'm like, that's the guy. So you got a further description from a mugshot. All I know is you were the guy in my yard. The guy that you said was five foot nine, 160 pounds. Yeah, Grounds. Fast and answered. Grounds. Sustained. And what prompted you to read the or pull up the police report? Objection. Grounds. He, he said it. He brought it out there. And what prompted the, the curiosity? So it would be fair to say at the time you wasn't privy to that knowledge yet. I had grounds. Uh, sustained us to the form of a question. At the time you pulled up the police report, as you say, you, you had no knowledge of the identity of the individual. I didn't know that you were going to be the person that had done that. You keep referring to the you. You. You're the, the guy I'm talking about when I refer to you. So you just made reference to looking the you in the eyes, but you would need... What would you prefer you, I call you? You would need... Because you're not going by Daryl Brooks. You would need me to step out of my shoes to tell my height and weight, right? Mr. Brooks, you're directed under 90611 to ask a question and not argue with the witness. That, that Thank was you. a question. It sounded like he didn't want to argue Please ask a question. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get to it. Any reason why you didn't give a, a, a written statement to law enforcement? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Irrelevant. Positive. Argumentative. Sustained. Did you at any time give a written statement to law enforcement? Any reason why not? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. And irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds. Grounds for the sustain. Mr. Brooks, please ask your next question. Grounds for the sustain. You said you pulled up the... Uh, police report at work the next day, right? No, I pulled up your mugshot. Well, you did say police report. Would that be fair to say? I just pulled up a mugshot. Actually, what I did is went into work the next morning and pulled up the police report. I'm, I'm you don't the recall internet. saying that you pulled up the police report specifically? I specifically wanted to pull up the picture of the person that had committed those atrocities to see if that was the person that had cut through my yard. And did you pull up the complaint? Have you ever seen the complaint? Have you yourself filed a complaint? Any reason why not? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Do you recall who subpoenaed you to testify here today? It's on the subpoena. You don't recall? Do you recall if it was the district attorney's office? It was. Do you recall about how long you received, or how long ago you received the subpoena? So you knew it was a possibility that you would be called to testify? I had no expectation of the subpoena until 
I went to the DA's office. So you went to the DA's office? They want to see if, if, if you're worth having as a witness or if you actually had any information that was pertinent to the case. And so would it be fair to say that you felt that you did? I didn't know. Grounds. Oh, um, did you feel that you had uh, information that would be relevant to the matter? That's an irrelevant question, Grounds. Your Honor. Grounds for, for the sustain, Your Honor? Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Next question, please. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? When you went to the uh, district attorney's office, did you recall whom you spoke with? Recall their names, I recall their faces. You said you do recall the names, not the faces? No, I recall their faces, not their names. Oh. Do you see any of those district attorneys in court here today? And for the record and for the jury, can you identify whom you, you're referring to? And that was around the time you first received the subpoena? Do you call ever being told about the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, Fag. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Fag, beyond Grounds. the scope of the witness's knowledge, legally inaccurate, sustained Grounds. in the form of the question. Did Attorney Opper ever tell you who the plaintiff was in this matter? The subpoena told me who the plaintiff was. And do you recall who the plaintiff is? Daryl Brooks. That's the plaintiff? Or not the plaintiff, though. The plaintiff is, I think, city of Waukesha or state of Wisconsin. I'm not sure. And it'd be fair to say that that's not a living, breathing human being. Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Are you aware that only a living, breathing human being can make a claim? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Argumentative. Grounds. Statement. It's definitely not. Not, definitely not yes. argumentative. Mr. Brooks, under 90611, I need you to move on from this topic and ask. Is, move on from what topic, Your Honor? Can I know what topic you're referring to, Your Honor? Next question, please. If I don't know the topic, how would I know to go in a different direction. Mr. Brooks, under 90611, I need you to ask a question. Do you know if there's even a plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Under 90611, sir, please move on from this topic or I will declare your cross-examination closed. Under what law in fact, Your Honor? Under 90611. And where can I find 90611? Your Honor, the jury deserves to know this information. All right, uh, then uh, the state, any redirect? No redirect. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. State may call its next witness. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Mr. Caprun, are you a resident of the city of Waukesha? Yes. Where were you living on November 21st of 2021? 417 Jackson Central Road. Avenue. Were you home on the afternoon of November 21st, that Sunday afternoon? Yes. Jackson leading. Overruled. His answer may stand. What was the answer? Yes. When I was, I was putting the the drugs in the uh, back of the truck. My oldest son looked up and he kind of pointed behind me and I went turn and uh, Mr. Brooks was uh, coming up the driveway. And uh, when I turned, he uh, kind of stopped and I noticed that he wasn't wearing a jacket or shoes. Um, just Could you tell us what he was wearing? He was he wearing... When Mr. Brooks lifted his shirt and did a 360 and said he was unarmed, were those the first words he said to you while you were in your driveway? Objection leading and I do not consent to being called that name. How many of your sons were present and in the driveway with you? Objection relevancy. How old were they at the time? Objection relevancy. Do you recall providing a physical description of this, of Mr. Brooks, the person you've referred to as Mr. Brooks today, back on November 21st when you met with the police? Objection. I do not consent to be called that name. Mr. Brooks, that's not a valid objection at this time. Um, go ahead, you may I answer. I consent to be called that name. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? <laughs> Back on November 21st, did you provide a physical description of the man who came up your driveway? Yes. Objection, rather than see. It was kind of dark yet, so then. So the so darkness well. prevented you from being able to see any detail of the yeah. arm tattoos? Yes. Yeah. Objection, yeah. leading. Your Honor, could you please instruct Mr. Brooks to remove his mask momentarily? Mr. Brooks, please remove your mask and look at the witness. Mr. Caprun, the person you've described today is walking up your driveway, the person who you've referred to as Mr. Brooks today. Do you see that person in the courtroom? Objection. Yes. Meeting. Could you please point to him and then tell us what he's wearing? Your Honor, let the record reflect, please, that the witness has identified. The record will so reflect. And that he pointed with his right hand towards Mr. Brooks. Thank you for that. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. For the record. Whose phone, you described handing a phone to Mr. Brooks. Whose phone was it? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Whose phone was it that you handed to the man in your driveway? Did you see what that man did with the phone? Uh, Objection, leading. 
When you met with the police, did they ask to see your phone? Yes. And the purpose of that was to try and see the number that yes. Mr. Brooks had called? Objection. Yeah. No one can to me and call it that name. Would you please show for the witness only uh, exhibit number 74, a photograph? Go ahead. Objection, Brother VC. Overruled. Grounds. Mr. Caproon, do you see a photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. What are we looking at here? This is the number that Mr. Brooks had called. Can you read that number out loud for us? Objection, oh. really busy. And this is a call history screenshot, is that right? Where we can see uh, all the recent calls to and from that number? Yes. Is this an accurate depiction of how your phone screen looked uh, that afternoon as you showed it to the police? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes. I move exhibit 74 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. Objection, really busy. Okay, Mr. Caproon, did you call this number at any point? Objection, leading. Um, so all three of these calls, outgoing, incoming, and canceled, would have been made by someone other than you? Yes. Objection, leading. And the only person who had your phone during that time frame was who? Objection, Me. leading. After Mr. Brooks handed you your phone back, what happened next? A lady had called me, and I answered the phone, and uh, I asked her if she was Uber, and she told me she wasn't. An Uber. Did she say anything else? Objection, leading. The call that you're talking about, the lady who called you, was that that incoming call from that 414 number we just looked at? Objection, leading. Did you recognize the number that called you? Recognize it. I didn't look at the number. I just answered the phone. The same number that Mr. Brooks had used your phone to dial. Objection, yes. leading. And I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Did Mr. Brooks leave at some point? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Do you know what street he was headed, or he appeared to be headed toward? Objection, speculative. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all. Uh, any questions, Mr. Brooks, for this yes. witness? I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Do you recall giving a statement to a Detective Schwartz? I'm referring to a Detective Mandy L. Schwartz, so that would be a woman. And do you recall giving a statement to a woman law enforcement officer? Do you recall uh, if that was the same night or days immediately after and do you recall in that statement if you were asked about the a description of the person in your driveway do you recall what you uh, what, what you said may you stay for the record and for the jury a black male 30s dreadlocks red shirt jeans no shoes no jacket if it pleases the court i have the statement here and i would like to show the witness is it his written statement it's the, I'm guessing, whatever statement he gave to Detective Shorts. I don't know if it's a written statement. Would maybe it the, may, maybe would it may. Would this be the police report? Yeah. If it's not his written statement, then I'm going to deny that request to show it to the witness. Do you recall in your um, report with Detective Shorts that you described the male as approximately 5'5 five, five to 5'6, five, weighing approximately 120 to 125 pounds, and the male appeared to be in his 20s? Yeah, I don't recall. Any reason why this report would say that and then you would, when you were asked the description, you gave a different description? Any reason why the two would conflict? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. Grounds. And mistakes the evidence. Sustained. Reason for the sustain? Grounds for the sustain? Sustained as to the form of the question. Well, I'm reading from the report that was given to the detective. And you can't testify as to what that report says. You can only question the witness on it, sir. That was a question. Do, do you recall any reason why your um, description would change from that night till now? I'm not sure. You made reference to when the mail that was in your driveway left your driveway. They went towards Central, I think is what you said. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Do you recall stating in your report that they went in the direction of West Avenue? Yes. Would it be fair to say that that's two different directions? Any reason why that would change from then till now? Not sure. Um, and you made reference to it being kind of dark, so it was a little hard to tell about certain aspects of that interaction. Would that be fair to say? Would you say it was dark or dusk? So it would be fair to say that you were unable to identify tattoos? Um, I would... You would be able to identify tattoos, or you wouldn't? I saw tattoos. But you couldn't make out because of the lighting? You couldn't make them out? Would that be fair to say? Do you recall stating that you were not able to identify the tattoos? Um, not being able to make out in detail would be the, uh, referring to the tattoos on the arms. During that interaction in the lighting, you could tell that there was a, 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 some type of rubber band or tie in the hair. 
you recall what color that might have been? You made reference to a, um, a number calling you back and you not looking at the number but just answering. Do you recall stating that? Did you ever at any time ask who that was that called? Uh, you stated that um, your sons were with you in the driveway. Was there any interaction with your sons at that time? Mm, don't recall. Do you recall stating that the male did not have any interactions with either of your sons? Do you recall stating that the male you had the, the interaction with, do you recall stating that you did not really think he was understanding what you were telling him? Uh, I don't understand the question. That would be in reference to um, you stating that your neighbor was an Uber driver, did you? Or a Lyft driver, you, was I think the word you said. Would that be fair to say? And you stated that you don't recall if the individual went to your neighbor's house at that time. Would that be fair to say? And do you recall about what time of the evening that was when you had the interaction? Um, um, I'm not quite sure. Do you recall uh, around what time you were subpoenaed to testify here today? And did you follow up with the district attorney's office at that point? Um, Do you recall whom you spoke with? Um, uh, uh, let the record reflect. You made a hand gesture with your left hand. Would that be referring to the table, the prosecution table? Yes. So you recall speaking to one of those attorneys. Do you recall whom? Um, and at any time, did you uh, ever see a police reporter complain in this matter? Um, did you ever yourself make a claim in this matter? Don't understand the question. Did you file a claim? Um, I don't understand the question. Did you yourself file a complaint with law enforcement? Ever spoke with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. You ever seen a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Had any conversations or any interactions with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Ever had a phone conversation with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Ever been contacted by the plaintiff in any way? Objection. Grounds. Have you ever contacted the plaintiff in any way? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Have you uh, followed uh, this matter in any way? Um, so it would be fair to say you didn't seek to testify in this matter. Would that be fair to say? Were you persuaded in any way to testify in this matter? Did you prepare in any way to testify in this matter? And before you, you were shown Exhibit 74, and that was the call log of your phone, correct? Before, oh, I'm sorry, before today, had you seen that? Those photos in reference to your call log, seen them before today? Yes. Did you anticipate seeing them today? Mm, yes. How so? Um, district attorney. So you were informed that you would see those same photos by the district attorney? Were you at any time told what to say by the district attorneys? And are you even aware of a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Oh, grounds for the sustained, Your Honor? I previously sustained it. Next question. Grounds for the sustained, Your Honor? Please continue. Otherwise, I'll declare the cross-examination yeah, ended. You can, you, just, you can declare whatever you want to. No, no further questions. Oh, thank you. Can you redirect? Very briefly. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Capruin, I just want to clarify the geography of your neighborhood, okay? The central run east to west, north to south, or something else? Objection leading. Where does it, what direction does it run where you were living at the time? Objection leading. East and, east and west. Well, overall, okay. it's not leading. Objection relevancy. East and west. And then where does it change and run north and south? Um, Objection. Relevance. Overruled. It changes um, my neighbor's house and then it turns north and, and south. And that happens to the west of where your yes. house was? Objection leading. Where is West Avenue in relation to where your house was? Objection. Relevance. So is it fair to say that if you're standing in your driveway at the time and head west, you would hit where Central Avenue turns and then if you kept going, you'd hit West Avenue? Objection leading. So is it also fair to say that if you're heading towards Central Avenue, you're also heading towards West Avenue? Objection. Leading. You recall meeting with myself and my colleagues here a few weeks ago? Objection. Yes. Relevance. You remember where that meeting took place? Here. In the courthouse? Mm -hmm. During business hours? Objection. Relevance. Overruled. You questioned him about meeting with the prosecution. They can, these are proper. I didn't question him about the time. It's proper redirect. Go ahead, sir. You may answer. Yes. Were we asking you questions about November 21st? Objection, speculative. We showed you uh, that the photograph of the call log, right? You had an independent recollection. You had seen that call log before because it's from your own phone. Objection, leading. And had you ever looked at your phone screen before? Objection, leading. Did we at any time give you a script for your testimony today? Objection, asked during cross. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all we have. Statement called to next witness. Uh, Ma'am, I'd like to direct your attention to the date of November 21, 2021. Do you recall from what location you watched the parade? Objection. 
really missy. Uh, we watched it from the corner of West and Wisconsin. Okay. And uh, do you understand that to be near the end of the parade route? Objection leading. And uh, as you were uh, at that location watching the parade, did something unusual happen? Objection leading. We, we saw a car going pretty fast around the corner. And I remember my husband said, that's not, a, not, that's not part of the parade, grab the kids, because our kids were in the middle of the road picking up candy at the time. Okay. So, and the car just did not stop and kept going. Was there a police officer present at that corner? Uh, yes, there was. What did you see the police officer do? Well, the, the car, I thought it was coming at us for a minute, but it ended up swerving and going through the barricades, and the police officer fired three shots at the vehicle. You were standing right there at that intersection? Yes, I was. What did you do after that, ma'am? Uh, well, we ran up to the house behind us as the car was coming at us. And at some point, did you decide to leave the area? Yes, we did. Where did you go? Well, we were parked a few blocks out of the way uh, on Elizabeth Street Okay. In, at Aries Industries. Now, do you have some familiarity with Aries Industries? Uh, yes, objection. I do. There is an objection. Wait until I rule on it before you answer. Okay. Thank you. What's your familiarity with Aries Industries? Objection. Overruled. My husband is employed at Aries Industries. Do you happen to know the address of that location? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. I don't offhand, no. Okay. Do you know what street it's on? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Leading. It's not leading, overruled. You may answer. As you were doing that, making your way back to your car, did you encounter somebody out on foot? Yes, we did. Tell us about that, please. Objection, leading. We had just rounded the corner onto Elizabeth Street, and Daryl Brooks, we ran into, we encountered Daryl Brooks. He came out of the shadows between a couple houses and approached us. Okay. Now you refer to this person by name. Did you know Mr. Brooks prior to this encounter? No. Okay. Never met him before? Correct. Objection. You said he kind of came out of the, did you say the bushes? Objection. What did you say? Objection. Oh, overruled. She rephrased. It appeared he came be from between two houses. So I, I don't know exactly where he was. Okay. And did you notice his appearance when he approached you? Objection. Leaving. Yes, I did. It was, I just remember it was a very windy, cold night, and he was dressed pretty inappropriately for the night. He had a, I noticed he was visibly shivering and was not wearing shoes. Do you see the same person present in this courtroom here today? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'm going to ask that Mr. Brooks be instructed to remove his mask and look at the witness so she can properly identify him, please. Mr. Brooks, please uh, unmask and look at the witness. Sir, would you please unmask and look at the witness? Thank you. I'm writing some down. All right, thank you. Just want to make sure you heard me. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> thank you. Is that the gentleman you encountered on the street that you're describing for us, ma'am? Yes, it is. Did Mr. Brooks speak to you in any way? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name. Yes, he did. What did he say? Objection leading. He asked if um, either of us had a phone that he could use. Um, after what we had just witnessed at the parade, where I think we were both pretty much on edge at that point. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. When you're referring to we, who are you referring to? Sorry, my husband and I. Okay, okay. Go ahead. So he asked for the phone. Correct. You kind of pause. Yep. And then what'd you do? Objection and then leading. His next words were, I'm not going to hurt you. I just need to use your phone. And that's when I gave him my phone. Did he use your phone? Did you see him manipulate your phone in some fashion? Objection. What do you mean by manipulate? I'm sorry, what was the question? Again? Did you see him use your phone in some way? Yes, I did. What did you see him do? Objection leading. Um, he called his mom. Could you hear what he was saying on his end? Yes, Objection I could hear what he was leading. saying. Could you hear the uh, responses being provided by the person on the other end of the phone? Objection. Speculative. No, I could not hear the other side of the conversation. Okay. Tell us to the best of your memory what you remember Mr. Brooks was saying into the phone. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. I Go ahead and please answer, please. not to be called that name. Thank you. He just kept repeating, call me an Uber. I need an Uber now. Did he sound urgent in his voice? Objection, leading. Specifically referring to the person he was speaking to by what name? Mom. Objection, leading. Well, let me ask you this. At, at some point, did he terminate his phone call? Objection, leading. And uh, did you see if he left your presence, where did he go? Objection, leading. Show you um, some uh, exhibits on the screen in front of you, okay? First is 171. Do you recognize anybody or any place in that photograph? Objection, leading. I recognize the Aries building in the background and Daryl Brooks on the porch. Okay. Uh, 171's previously been admitted, Your Honor. I'm going to uh, request permission to publish again. Objection. Objection. 
Cordis, that's a touch screen in front of you. Could you just please point out uh, Aries Industries <laughs> and specifically, if you can, the area where you saw Mr. Uh, Brooks Objection. head to the lobby of the building? Objection. I don't consent to be involved in that again. Um, Jerry will disregard that. It's way in the other corner over here, so it's okay. hidden by the trees. Okay. So the area where you first encountered Mr. Brooks, is that actually shown in this photograph? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Jerry will disregard that comment. I don't consent. For the uh, record. Is that what Mr. Brooks looks like? Looked like that evening when you spoke to him? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Now we're going to put up Exhibit 1. I'm sorry. Exhibit 76, what do you recognize it to be? It's the lobby of Aries Industries. Is this the door that you directed Mr. Brooks to? Objection, I don't consent to being caught that name. Do you believe this video is a true and accurate depiction of the events of November 21 of 21? Yes, I do. Uh, move to your admit 76 and permission to publish, Your Honor. The witness wasn't there at the, in this video. How could it be relevant? Uh, your objections? No, that, sir. And how could it be relevant? Okay, we can pause. Did you see a person approach the doors to the building during the video? Yes, I did. I saw Daryl Brooks approach the door. And is that consistent with what you saw that night uh, as you watched Mr. Brooks? Yes. Objection. I don't consent to being called their name. Thank you, ma'am. I don't have any other questions. Mr. Brooks may have questions for you. Any cross, sir? I don't consent to being called their name for the record. Your cross, please. Can I get to it? You just stated that before the interaction with the person that you had, you didn't know him. That be fair to say? Yes, that's fair to say. So how could you refer to him by name if you didn't know him? The video of you being arrested and you had since been identified on TV. So that's how you came to the, the name? That's correct. So it would be fair to say that you got that off of news reports. You said the individual you spoke with seemed out of place and disoriented like he didn't know where he was. Would that be fair to say? And how would you characterize disoriented? You just seemed very, very nervous and that you didn't know where you were. Who's you? You, you had specifically said, I don't know where I am. Who's you? Or where am I specifically? So disoriented would, would from your perspective, be exactly what? Disoriented as you did not know where you were. And you made reference to your phone being used, right? That's correct. And you also made reference to not being able to hear the uh, the person on the other line. That's correct. But you also made reference to not person who used your phone not being able or not answer, answering what was being asked to them. That'd be fair to say? Objection. That's a compound Grounds. question, vague and unclear. Sustained us to the form of the question. If you couldn't hear what was being said on the other end of the line, how can you how can you say that there was questions being asked? Well, there was clearly a conversation going on, and you just kept repeating, just call me an Uber. So it would be fair to say you don't know what was being discussed? Besides call me an Uber, yes, that's correct. Do you recall the description you gave in your written statement? Uh, yes, I believe so. You believe so? Yes. And what was that? African American male, about 160 pounds, 5'8", wearing a red t-shirt, no shoes. And you referred to this individual coming from between houses? That's correct. Is that what you actually saw? Yes, that's what I saw. I saw you approach us at the very start of the block from between two houses. Any reason why that's not in your written statement? There was an, a detective at our house that was writing the statement for it. M maybe that part got missed. I'm not sure. Was it this statement? Uh, permission to show the witness the written statement? Well, I don't know that it's necessary, Your Honor. It ha she hasn't expressed any inability to recall. It's the same thing. Uh, she did. She just said she don't know why that something was not in her written statement. What she said is she doesn't know why the detective didn't write it in there. The detective is the one who wrote it, Your Honor. So sustained. So were you, Next, sustained so us were to the you, form of Mr. Brooks. Let me answer. Sustained us to the form of a question. So the officer was writing what you told him, or did you actually write it yourself? I did not actually write it myself. Do you recall that officer's name? No, I do not. You made reference when you were at the parade. You made reference to seeing a car swerve, or you said the car was swerving toward you. It looked like a car that was out of control. And you said you saw it drove toward the barricade? Correct. I saw it drive through the barricade. When you say through the barricade, uh, describe that. The car sped up and drove straight through the barricade and continued on West Avenue. Do you recall if this barricade was standing up or laid I do down? Not, I do not recall. I would assume it was standing up. And it, was it at that same moment that you saw officer fire shots? That's correct. Do you recall how many shots? Three shots. 
Did you see if the shots hit the vehicle, the car, as you say? No, I did not. I was running up towards the house at the time with my son in my arms, and I was just trying to keep an eye on the vehicle, so I did not see where the shots actually went. Did you see a vehicle hit anyone? No, I did not. Could you see into the vehicle when you saw it, and you said the vehicle went down West Street? Did you see where it went from there, or did it just go straight down West Avenue? Anything else stick out to you about that day? I, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, besides besides seeing the vehicle and, and the police firing shots and then running into you afterwards, I mean, that was strange enough. Do you recall what day you gave the statement? Was <laughs> Not it exactly. the same night or was it a few days after or a week? or? It might have been up to a week later. I don't know the exact date. Recall why it took so long? So it would be fair to say by that time you had saw news reports and had learned information about what happened. Before today, had you seen any of the video footage or, or photos that, that you saw today? Had, had you seen any of those before today? Are you talking about the video of you being arrested or I guess I don't understand the question. Uh, the videos that, the video footage that you saw today, had you seen that before today? I did see the Aries Industries clip before, yes. What about the other uh, the other exhibit that was shown? I recognize that from a ring video I had I had seen from the arrest. So it'd be fair to say a lot of what you learned came from news reports. After the incident, yes. Did you make any claim in this matter? File a claim. What kind of a claim? Have you filed any claim? No. You filed a complaint. I not no. I I just gave a witness statement to the detectives. I did not file a complaint specifically. About what time did you learn that you could possibly testify in this matter? Objection relevance. Well, Overruled, you may answer. Um, when I received a subpoena in the mail from the DA's office. Do you recall whose name was on that subpoena? Uh, Sue Opper. Do you see Sue Opper in court today? Yes, I do. Can you point her out for the jury and for the record? I'll stipulate, Your Honor. Thank you. The record will reflect the stipulation and the witness identifying Attorney Opper. Do you, call, do you recall around what time you received that uh, <laughs> subpoena? I don't recall exactly, no. After you received the subpoena, did you, subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office at that point? Uh, they contacted me. Attorney Opper did? So, someone, it was a, someone from the witness, I don't know what her exact title is, so it's someone from the DA's office. It's not specifically Sue Opper. Like a witness advocate type of? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Was it like a witness advocate? I don't know what her exact title is. Do you recall her, the, her name? Yeah, her, her, yes, her name is Carrie. After you learned of the additional information, did you uh, read any police reports or a complaint? No. Are you aware of who the plaintiff may be in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Ever been notified who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Yes, there is. And who's the plaintiff? I believe it's the state of Wisconsin. Would that constitute a, a, a breathing human being or an entity? Objection, Grounds. argumentative, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Are you aware that only a human being can bring a complaint or be a plaintiff? Objection, misstatement Grounds. of the law. Sustained. You ever had any interaction with the state of Wisconsin? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds for Surrender the sustained. Surrender 90611. Move on. Have you ever contacted the state of Wisconsin in this matter? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained. We'll move on or I'll declare the cross-examination ended. Of course you would. No further questions. I'll rise for the jury, please. Point for the jury. parties, uh, please be back in 10 minutes. We are in recess. All right, thank you, everyone. Please be seated. State, have the next witness available. Audio on? No. Not yet. Now it is. Are you address subject matter jurisdiction? Still has yet to be proven for the record. Is that a judicial determination that you don't have to answer that, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, I've already answered subject matter jurisdiction. You know that full well. No, the I don't. The decision was entered last week. I know nothing. It has yet to be proved. That's what I know. It doesn't need to be proved. It, it does. It has to be proven by the prosecution. You know that. No, it, I, I actually know to the contrary, so we're not going to address so, it. So show me a lawful law that is that it says Mr. that. Mr. Brooks, I provided you with the law. No, I'll you give have you not. I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll have my clerk print off another copy of that order. So you don't you have, have to it. do that. Have, have no, her I'm going print, to because you apparently didn't read no, it. No, so have her print off proof. Have her print off proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction. How about that? It has to be proven Mr. for the Brooks, record. It has yet to be proven. You are simply wrong as a matter of law. No, I'm not. If I'm wrong, then then show me show me that I'm wrong. I've given you the constitutional and no, the you statutory authority. No, and you have not. Said. You have not proven it on the record. It doesn't need to be proven. Sir. It does need to be proven. I believe the jury's coming in. Right. I believe that you got to prove it. you got to prove subject matter jurisdiction. 
uh, set for value in return for value that document is not proof of subject matter jurisdiction for the record. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. State may call its next witness. Sir, direct your attention to November 21st, 2021. What were you doing? I was driving Lyft. It's a rideshare app. Did you go to the parade, the City of Waukesha parade that day? I did not. Did, were you aware that the parade was in downtown Waukesha that day? Objection, lady. Do you recall approximately what time you started uh, driving that day? Um, it was wrong. Like Objections noted it's overruled. And do you know approximately how many fares you took that day? That Objection, day. speculative. About 11 or 12. Were your clients all from the city of Waukesha? Was that the general area that you were working? Objection. Mm -hmm. Irrelevant. Overruled. When you got home, did you see anything on the news? No. Um, at some point, did you become aware of an incident that had occurred during the city of Waukesha Christmas parade? Objection, yes. Lee. Generally, what information were you? did you obtain? Objection, Lee. Overruled. Looking back, when you were working November 21st, 2021, did anything seem relevant with regard to that news that you saw? Objection, Lee. Overruled. You may answer. Yeah, I had a call that was in the area, and it was like it was like just like a really weird call because no one ever showed up. But there was a very descriptive message that I got from the person that asked for the call about who I was looking for. So I'm going to direct your attention to that that day, November 21st, at approximately 5:15 p.m. What time did that, or how do you receive communication when you get a client? When you're signed into the app, it'll just pop up. You know, it's a, you can accept it or you can decline. So you say it just pops up. How does it pop up on, on my, my cell phone? Okay. And did you receive a fare request or a ride request at approximately 515? Objection PM? leading. What information were you given with regard to that request? Objection um, leading. The fare came in for a dawn and then I was given information that I was looking for a light-skinned black guy with dreadlocks. Now when you say that your the name is was it the name associated with Dawn? Mm -hmm. That's a yes? Yes. Okay. And what does that mean to you? I'm not sure exactly how Lyft works, but that's just objection relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. That's just the name of the person that I'm picking up. Did you or do you receive information as to where you're taking the person when you initially get the pop-up? Objection, leave. When you arrived at the location, do you send something through your app that says I've arrived? Objection, leave. Yes, you just, yeah, there's a button that you can just click and say I arrived, and it sends a message to the person letting you know that you're out, let them know that you're outside and they have five minutes to come out. The automated message went out saying that you were there and that you give that person five minutes? Yes. What happened after five minutes? I began to message with whomever the person was on the other end, letting them know that I was waiting outside and that they're, you know, I was in a white car. And this is a chat feature as part of the app? Yes. Leading. And then what happened? Um, I received a message back, let me know who I was looking for, and that they were calling a ride for someone else and they didn't know where he was. They then again gave me a description of who I was looking for. And what was that description? Objection leading. Over. Okay. Accent answered. A light skinned black guy with dreadlocks. I sent a message saying I didn't see anyone. At that point, I was like, I had been out there for about seven and a half minutes. So at that point, I just canceled the ride. Approximately what time <clears throat> do, you, do you recall canceling the ride? Objection, Lee. And when someone requests request a ride and they don't appear, is there a charge then to that person? Objection, irrelevancy. Thank you, nothing further, thank you. <clears throat> do you remember about what time the uh, call came in for the lift? 5.15. Do you, do you recall being uh, interviewed by any law enforcement in the days after uh, that night? Do you know if, uh, do you know if that was by phone or, or in person? It was in person. Upon arriving at the uh, destination, you were supposed to be uh, giving a lift to someone. Do you recall if there was anything strange about the destination? Yeah, it was a closed building. There was no one out there, no cars in the parking lot. And you said you canceled the ride around 5.30ish? Yeah. Do you, uh, do you recall what you did from that point? I took another fare. Same area or? Same area. And you made, you made reference to uh, someone telling you something that wasn't true that was going on. Do you recall what that was? Uh, my sister said that the school told my niece to stay in her dorm because there was an active shooting. And usually, does your Lyft app have a, a profile picture attached to it? 
No. Do you recall when speaking to a law enforcement, something to the effect of referring to a profile picture or a description included in the profile? I recall saying that there was no profile picture. And were you able to see any phone numbers or contact information? I was not. Before you canceled the ride, do you recall the last contact with the, the person who had set the lift up? They said, I don't know what to tell you. And you said usually uh, even if it's uh, no pickup, there's a, a, a charge still associated with it? Yeah. Do you recall how many uh, requests you completed after that failed one? Eight to ten. And you did state that you were not at the parade that, that evening, right? True. No, no further questions. I thank you. Any redirect? No. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. State may call its next witness, please. State calls Daniel Ryder. Sir, do you live in the city of Waukesha? Where were you living back on November 21st of 2021? 553 Elizabeth Street. Can you describe what that residence looks like? Is it a single family house, multi-unit? What, what's it look like? Okay. Yeah, it's uh... Do you know what Aries Industries is? Yeah. Where is Aries Industries in relation to the house you're describing? Objection leading. That afternoon, November 21st, were you aware <coughs> that the Waukesha Christmas Parade was taking place? Yes, I, I was aware of the parade. Did you attend the parade? No. Did you watch the Packer game? Uh, I did watch the Packer game. Do you recall what happened at approximately 5 o'clock p.m. that day? Objection leading. Watching the game, uh, about 5 o'clock, my ring doorbell goes off, uh, and then there's a gentleman at my front porch knocking on the door saying that they're homeless, they're cold, and they need to use my phone so that they can tell their Uber where to pick them up. What did that gentleman look like? African American. He had long hair and a beard. Do you remember what he was wearing? Yeah, he had a uh, like a red t-shirt, reddish orange t-shirt, and no shoes on, pants. Um, but I remember it stood out to me because it was cold and really windy that day, and he was outside with, with a t-shirt and no shoes. You mentioned a few moments ago your ring doorbell. Is that a device fixed to your exterior uh, door frame? Objection lead. Uh, it's, it's fixed to my, the outside of my porch. And does that capture video? Objection yeah. leading. What about audio? Yes. Objection leading. Did your ring video doorbell capture the video and audio of your initial interaction with that gentleman on the afternoon of November 21st? Objection leading. The 20 seconds that I got from the initial interaction was just the suspect coming up to my house and knocking on the door and saying he's homeless and needs help. I didn't get the verbal interaction that I had with him on cam on the ring doorbell because it only filmed 20 seconds. Subsequently, at some point, provide that 20 second ring video doorbell clip to a law enforcement officer. Yes. Did you and edit it in any way before sending it? No. no, and and there is four or five that I submitted to the police. All right, let's work our way through those. Your Honor, I'd ask that we please show Exhibit Number Seventy Five for the witness only. <coughs> You see a video on the screen in front of you? I do. What are we looking at here? Objection uh, This is Mr. Brooks coming up to my door. You said Mr. Brooks. Did you know his name at that time? Uh, not at the time, no. Does this appear to accurately depict your front porch as it looked uh, as that subject walked up to your door? Yes. Move Exhibit 75 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Granted. Objection. It's noted. Overruled. I'll ask you, Mr. Ryder, do you see a date and time stamp on the bottom right-hand corner of this video? Objection okay. leading. Is that a time stamp that's a feature of Ring, or was that added after the fact? Objection. Overruled. To your knowledge, does that timestamp appear to be accurate? Objection. Overruled. Speculative. For the record, the objection was overruled. This is a 20-second clip. I'm going to ask that we play it once with audio. <laughs> reading that timestamp on the bottom right hand at the beginning of this exhibit? Objection leading. November 21st, 2021, 5.01 p.m. The voice we heard in that exhibit, whose voice is that? Objection leading. Overruled. Objection. Mr. Brooks's voice? Uh, Your Honor, I'd ask that Mr. Brooks please be instructed to remove his face mask momentarily. Sir, would you please remove your face mask and face the witness? Was that a question of... The state's mask. There, sir, please remove your face mask and face the witness. I'm, just, I'm confused. He made a statement about voice. Um, Please what, remove your mask. What was the question? Please remove your mask and face the witness. 
Mr. Ryder, do you see the person depicted in exhibit number 75? He's sitting at the table right there. And has the record reflect that the witness has identified Mr. Brooks? Objection, no. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Go ahead, your next question, please. What happened in the moments after this video, the 20 seconds that were captured? So he was on my porch for, I don't know exactly, a minute maybe, and he was telling me the interaction, or uh, he was telling me that he needed to use my phone to let his Uber know where to pick him up, and that he was homeless and cold, and he said he didn't have any weapons or anything on him and he lifted his shirt real quick and I was like no it's okay you can use my phone and I let him come inside and warm up I just tend to believe people and I'm used to you know doesn't didn't phase me too much I mean I was nervous for sure but I was like yeah I can let you use my phone and he made it sound like the uber was gonna be here just any second just needed to know where to pick him up so I said yeah you can come and warm up while you wait for the uber and uh, I let him sit on the couch right by the window out front I said you can look out here waiting for your uber and he's on the phone most of the time after that with uh, his mom and he's saying the address five 553 Elizabeth Street is where it needs to come and you know how far away is it kind of things like that but I guess I guess is that what you're wondering or let me back up yeah. you made a motion with your hands there regarding what Mr. Brooks said about not being armed you, you do that again just for anybody who missed it objection I don't know not to see you being called that name go ahead and again for the record yeah so I don't remember exactly what the motion was I remember him saying he didn't have any weapons and he's not dangerous and I think he lifted his shirt really quickly but then I was like ah oh, don't worry I'm not worried about that and so I didn't it's not like I patted him down or anything like that did you let him in the front door that would be right next to your video doorbell? I it's actually... Leading. I can rephrase. Go ahead, rephrase. What door did you let Mr. Brooks into your home? I, I let him in the back door. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Yeah, the back door. So he went around the side of the house to get to the back door? That's right. What happened when he got to the back door? I don't remember exactly. I remember letting him in. I think I gave him a coat right away and then gave him my phone. What else did you give him? I gave him a sandwich because he said he was homeless and I was... I said, oh, I can get you some slippers to put on your feet to warm your feet up. But yeah, so I gave him a jacket to wear while he was at my house and a sandwich. Testified earlier that he was on the phone with his mom. How do you know that? Jake Shane, speaking to you. Overruled. Uh, a few reasons. I heard him say mama a lot and his mother called me and I didn't answer. But his mom called and left a voicemail after the fact. Whose phone was he using while he was inside your house? Jake Shane, really busy. Overruled. He was using my personal cell phone. <laughs> How would you describe his demeanor as he was inside your house? Jake Shane, leading. Overruled. I would say flustered but also there were many times he was thanking me did mr brooks leave your home at some point objection i don't consider to being called that name i lost train of thought can you say it again did he leave your home at some point he uh left when i asked him to let's pause there sure and show for the witness only uh, exhibit number 77 can we show for the witness only please exhibit 78 and we'll show you 79 now are exhibits 77 78 and 79 accurate depictions of your porch that night Jackson. yes overruled move exhibit 77, 78, and 79 in the evidence and ask to publish all three. Objection. <laughs> Mr. Ryder, could you read the time and date stamp for us on the bottom right hand corner? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. What are you wearing in the video? A gray shirt. Overruled. A gray shirt. What do you recall being said in that portion of the video? Jason Bleedy. Overruled. Exhibit 78. Why me? Why me? Mr. Ryder, what happened during that video clip? Jason Lee. Mr. Brooks came to my door, asked to come back inside to look for his ID. Did you ever find the, that person's ID? No. Did that person leave anything else inside of your house? No. Flip flops, no. sweatshirt, no. Jason Lee. What, if anything else, did that suspect leave in your house? I don't. Lee. Overruled. Exhibit 79. <laughs> The video is a little bit blurry. Do you know where uh, Mr. Brooks is at this point? Objection leading, and I do not consent to being called that name. That's all I have for this witness. Thank you. All right, any cross? Yes, one, just one second. 
Have you seen any of those videos? Not that I can think of at the moment. For that evening, you didn't know the guy that came to your house, correct? Correct. And so why do you refer to why do you refer to him by name if you didn't know him? <laughs> because after the fact, the police officers informed me of who the suspect was that was at my house that night. It would be fair to say you uh, you captured, or your ring uh, captured quite a little bit of video. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Did you turn over all the ring footage to law enforcement? I believe so. Were you aware that the ring footage footage was shown on social media platforms? I was aware, yes. Any idea how that came about? Protection. Grounds. Relevance. Um, Grounds. Overall. Uh, yeah, I released it. You released it. What, what do you explain what you mean by released it? The news wanted the footage and I thought that this was good footage for this community and the victims to see some justice of the suspect put into cuffs, so I decided to release it. Were you paid for that release? I was. So it would be fair to say that you profited off your ring footage? The video did make money. Do you recall how many videos you released? I believe it was four. And you got paid for all four? We were getting bombarded by the news, so we did it. We worked with the agent that then dealt with all the news people, and we just got some off the back end. So would it be fair to say that you sold that footage? Yes. And you stated that you were, while having this interaction, you were you were a little nervous. That be fair to say? Yes, sir. Did you feel like you were in any danger or just nervous? I never felt like I was in danger until I saw the police driving by. But initially, your interaction, you didn't feel like you would be overtaken in any way? No, and the person at my door was very polite. And you testify to the to the effect that you had just arrived back home from hunting that, that evening? That's correct. At that time, had you had you heard anything about what happened at the parade? No. At any time during your, during your interaction with the suspect, did you notice any car keys? No. It's not to say he didn't have any on him, but I didn't notice any. D you didn't notice any? That, nope. That'd be fair to say? Yep, that'd be fair to say. Did you notice any drug or alcohol? I didn't personally. And you stated that you gave the suspect a jacket and a sandwich? Yes, sir. And was that due to the suspect saying that they were homeless and, and cold, or did you just take the initiative to do that? But I do remember them saying multiple times that they were homeless and cold. And you let them use your phone, correct? Yes. How do you know for sure who they were talking? Because the number that they had called called me back and left a voicemail saying that they were the mother of the person that just called. Did you follow up with that voicemail? I did not. Oh. Grounds. Overruled. May I just clarify the basis was he didn't describe it as a voicemail? He did. He said he left I thought he did, but yeah. anyway, the objection's overruled. Did you follow up with the caller that left the voicemail after that? I never called her back. Do you recall keeping that, that phone number in your call log at, after that? I, I believe it's still in my voicemail history, if that's what you're wondering. Even even now? Even now, yeah. Any reason why you would keep it this long? Uh, it's just, I didn't per go out of my way to keep it. It just is on there. I don't get a lot of voicemails. I checked the this morning just to make sure it was on there and it still is on the bottom of my list. So why would you check for it this morning? Because I thought maybe it'd come up today. I still have the voicemail if, if I needed to bring that up. What led you to believe that it may come up this morning? Because I knew I knew I had to testify. What do you mean by you knew you had to testify? Is that... I got a subpoena and asked to come and share what happened at my house that day and that was one of the things that happened. You seek, So you seek to testify? Objection. Grounds. Sustain us to the form of the question. So you made reference to still keeping the voicemail. Did you uh, keep any of the ring footage? It's still on my phone, yes. Uh, you said it was like six or seven videos? I think I've got only four saved, maybe five. Any reason why you would keep those this long? Just haven't felt the need to get rid of them, I guess. I mean, it's that video is protecting me, you know, from being involved or anything, so I, there's no reason I would ever get rid of it. Would it be fair to say that you weren't involved in anything that, that evening? Other than trying to help somebody who I thought was in need, I was not involved in anything that evening. So why would you have any fear that the, you may be implicated in anything and if you know that you weren't involved in anything. Because I had a suspect who had just done horrendous things come to my house and automatically people are going to think that maybe I had something or I knew you or something and I didn't. And so this is just validating that you told me you were homeless and some, and I was trying to help a stranger out when really, sorry, what's the question? I mean, it would be fair to say that you, you weren't arrested in any connection to any events that evening. Would that be fair to say? That'd be fair. To, I've never been arrested. And so my question would be, why would you think that you would be implicated? Implicated in any way. Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Next question. And how do you feel that the keeping of the videos would protect you from something that you don't need protection from? 
Objection? Grounds. Asked and answered. Sustained. I think I misspoke when I said that it was protecting me because it's not necessarily protecting me. It's just something I haven't got rid of yet. Do you recall an uh, interaction with law enforcement by the name of Officer Luling? I do. Do you recall emailing him uh, portions of the uh, ring footage? Yes. Do you recall how many portions? Maybe four or five. I, I don't remember exactly how many. So, no, I can't recall that exactly how, how many I did. Do you recall if it was six? I don't recall. I'm assuming at some point that after escorting the suspect out of your house, you went back into your house? Yep. Uh, and what did you do from that point? I went right inside, locked the door, and don't remember exactly what I did. I think I stood in there and looked outside. When asking for your phone and your jacket back, did you? was there any resistance on the part of the suspect? Or did they just... Uh, maybe a few seconds to finish up their phone call, but they gave it back as soon as I asked for it. And you stated at one point going back in your house to look for the ID and wasn't able to find the ID? Yeah, the suspect came back after I escorted him out of my house, came back like about a minute later, asking to come back inside and look for his ID. And I said, no, I'll look for it for you. So I was looking for his ID. I didn't let him back inside. And you didn't find any ID when you looked? No, I did not find any ID. Did you find anything unusual? No. And after um, seeing uh, reports on the news and, and, and things of the like, did you come into any more information at that point? Objection. The grounds. Vague. Sustained us to the phone the question. Did you learn anything from news reports that you didn't know that evening? Uh, yes. After the fact, I learned of the suspect's criminal... Well, That's, I guess... Sorry. We're not going to go there. Okay. I learned the name of the suspect at my house. I learned what that suspect was put into cuffs for at my house. And I, I learned what vehicle he drove and the details of the incident. Did you observe the suspect at, in the vehicle at any time? No. Did you notice any vehicles parked in the area that you hadn't seen before? No. You made reference to briefly speaking with neighbors at that time? Yeah. When I was escorting the suspect out of my house, the neighbors said, are you guys looking for that guy? So I said, no, this might be him. Do you know what they were referring to at that, at yeah. that moment? Yeah, my neighbor was at the parade. And he was talking about the person driving the vehicle through the parade. And you knew all that at that moment? No, I, I didn't learn about that until the police told me after the fact. It would be fair to say at that time, at that moment, you didn't know what they were referring to. That would be fair to say, correct. Did you have any other interactions with those neighbors that evening? Yes. And did they? At any time, did they at any time say anything to you about seeing a vehicle or having knowledge of a vehicle at that time? Yeah, Greg, my next door neighbor, saw the red vehicle running over people. And he saw that? He told you that he saw that? Yeah. Do you know if they gave any uh, reports to law enforcement at that time? I don't know that. The officers that arrested the suspect at your at your home that evening, did, did you see your neighbors speak with any of those law enforcement officers? I didn't see them, no. And you stated that they told you what they saw? Any reason why they wouldn't speak with law enforcement, seeing as how they were right there in the area? Objection. Grounds. All the speculation. Sustained. So would it be safe to say you were pretty well informed that you would be testifying in this matter? I didn't know. I knew that it was likely. I didn't know until I got the subpoena letter. And when did you receive that subpoena? End of August. And that was received by, it was sent by the district attorney's office? Yes. You recall the name? No. After receiving the subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office? They said that they would be emailing me with more details. And I waited until I got the initial email before I did any following up with the district attorney's office. Office. Were those emails pertaining to testifying in this matter? Yes. Have you yourself filed any claims in this matter? No. Have you yourself seen or read any complaint in this matter? No. Would you yourself can consider yourself an injured party in this matter? No. Are you aware of who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Sustained. Would it be fair to say that you followed reporting on this incident? Initially, yeah, I watched the news. Uh, initially? I was following the initial reports back in November of last year. So pretty much right when the incident happened, is what you follow. Correct. You ever hear who the plaintiff was in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Have you yourself ever had any interaction with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Sustained. Do you, are, do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Do you recall how much you sold the ring footage for? Objection. Grounds. <coughs> Relevance. Overruled. He may answer. A little over 23,000. Would it be fair to say that's 
quite a quite a nice profit Objection. grounds. Sustained us to the form of the question. And would that be the price just for one uh, one of the ring footages or in total? All, all that you sold? That was total. Yeah. The four. I, like I said, I don't know how that worked. Do you recall which station that was? Which news station? NBC, ABC. So it was CBS. multiple. Yeah, I mean, I don't recall all of them, no. So it would be fair to say it was pretty much the all the standard news stations. Yeah. Do you recall if that included TMZ? Objection. Ground. Sustained. Major point. You can move on. No further question. Thank you. Any redirect? Please. Thank you. Mr. Ryder, do you have your phone on you right now? Overruled. I don't. I gave it to a gal that let me in here. You yeah. mentioned uh, you checked your phone this morning to confirm that you still had the voicemail we've been talking about, right? Yes. Relevancy. The rules, you question him about it. It's proper. If we, I'm referring to, I'm referring to the use of the phone. What is the phone? We haven't gotten there yet, sir. If we were to provide your phone to you here today, do you think you'd be able to find that voicemail? Objection. Overruled. Yes. Do you think you'd be able to play it on speakerphone for everybody to hear? Objection. What is the relevancy? Overruled. Yeah, to do that. Objection. What is the relevancy? You can unplug it from the charger. It's mm -hmm. probably to the witness. Objection. What Thank is you. the relevancy? It's relevant, sir. You cross-examine him about it. Yeah, I cross-examine him about the question, Mr. not Brooks, playing the phone. Please, I made my ruling. So is that is that a judicial <laughs> determination? Please open up your phone and let me know when you find the voicemail. It's still pulling up right now. Sure. You followed instructions and turned your phone on, phone off before you came into court. Objection. Overruled. Yes, I turned the phone off before court. The jury will be instructed in terms of what is said in that voicemail, not to consider it for the truth of the matter asserted, but just simply to substantiate the voicemail was received. And Part of that request, Judge, would be to include the time that the voicemail was left and the number from which it came. The objection would be the relevancy of that. The objection's noted, and you may ask the witness those questions. You might as well ask about the video studio. We'll get to those. Can you tell us uh, what phone number that voicemail came from? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. 414-610-2153. Can you tell us what time that voicemail came in? Yeah. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. 527 p.m. on November 21st. Of 2021? That was 2021. Objection. Leading. Overruled. His answer may stand. And, Your Honor, at this point, I'd ask to allow the witness play that voicemail. Again, the jury, again, will only consider this not for the truth of the matter of what's asserted in that voicemail, but simply to substantiate that it was received. Go ahead. Objection. Noted. Overruled. This is Mr. Ryder. I'm just... Sorry, rest I'll restart it. I was using the wrong mic. Mr. Ryder. I'm just... I don't know what's going on. I'm at work. I work at Freighter. And my son... That was my son who... We let use your phone. And he's calling. I don't know what's going on. I'm just trying to see if he got the lift or what. Because the guy is in a white guy charger. I can apparently the lift driver switched cars. And I didn't get the message. So I'm just trying to find out what the hell is going on. So I just, just want someone to just call me and tell me something. Because I don't know. And then that's the end of the voicemail? Yes. And you didn't contact the person who called you and left that voicemail after the fact, did you? Objection. Ask and answer. And cross. Overruled. The videos that we played in court today, those four videos, exhibit 75, 77, 78, and 79. You turned all those videos over to the police, is that correct? Objection leading. Sustained. While you've got your phone in front of you, are you able to access your call log? Um, yeah. Objection leading. Overruled. Can you go back to November 21st of 2021? Okay. Can you see what number Mr. Brooks dialed that day using your phone? Objection leading. Overruled. Objection. I don't consent to being caught that day. Um, so my call log didn't save back that far. Do you recall if it was the same phone number that you received that voicemail from? Objection speculative. Overruled. I don't recall for sure. No. The videos that you released to the media, did you release anything to the media that you didn't also provide to the police? Objection. Overruled. Did you alter those videos or the audio that goes with them in any way when you release them to the media? Objection hearsay. Overruled. No. What about when you sent them to the police? Objection leading. Overruled. No. Never altered them. Were you aware at the time that Ring is a, a subscription service? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, we pay subscription for it. And there's a cloud account that goes with that, is that right? Objection leading. S um, sustained us to the form of the question. I think this is a pretty foundational question necessary well, to develop testimony. You're probably right, and there is, can be, some leading questions out, are allowed, but just rephrase that one, please, and we'll go from there. Okay. Where do the videos go aside from your phone? Objection speculative. Overruled. Pretty sure that there's a ring cloud that ring, the company ring can probably access the footage, but I am not, I was never notified that they have access to it or anything like that. If someone did want to access those videos through ring, were you aware at the time that someone would have been able to double check and make sure that you didn't fudge with that video? Objection. Lee. When Mr. Brooks first knocked on your door, were you planning to 
to sell those videos? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. It's objection. Speculative. It's not speculative. Overruled, sir. Objection. Hearsay. It's not hearsay. Go ahead. Uh, no, I had, I had no idea what was going to happen after that. What about after you let him in the back door and gave him a sandwich and a jacket? Were you, was objection. this all part of a plan at that point? Objection. Leading. Overruled. No, there's no plan to, to get footage to sell or anything like that. No. You simply provided those videos to law enforcement and the media. Objection. Leading. Overruled. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. I don't have anything yeah. else. After the fact. All right. Thank you. Uh, you may step down. We will take our lunch. All right. We are back on the record in State versus Brooks. Appearances are as they were before. Bring the jury out, please. You didn't call it that name that you started with. I don't know if audio is on. It didn't specifically refer to you, but I did say State versus Brooks. Your objection is noted for the record, and we'll continue with testimony. Will you be addressing subject matter jurisdiction? Is that a judicial determination not to answer, Your Honor? So is that a tacit of agreement? All right. Uh, subject matter jurisdiction has yet to be proven for the record. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. State have the next witness, please. Thank you. The state calls Officer Rebecca Carpenter. Were you working uh, on duty as a law enforcement officer on November 21st of 2021? Objection. Yes, sir, I was. Leading. Overruled. Yes, I was. Did you at some point become aware that there was a parade in downtown Waukesha? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Yes, I did. I answered a call on the radio that said there was a man going door to door on Elizabeth Street asking to use people's phones to call an Uber. Did you go to look for that man? I did. Where did you go? I responded to Elizabeth Street and I parked my squad on Elizabeth and West. Were you wearing a body-worn camera at the time? Yes, sir, I was. Was that device also equipped with a microphone? Objection yes. leading. Overruled. Yes, sir. And that microphone was synced up with the video? Yes, sir. Do you know whether your device was activated as you were walking down Elizabeth Street that, that yeah. afternoon? Objection. It was. Overruled. May we please display for the witness only exhibit number 80. What is it? It is my body camera video of walking down Elizabeth Street. From November 21st? Objection yes, sir. leading. I will overrule it. Is this video and the associated audio accurately reflect what happened that night as you saw it? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, sir. And move exhibit 80 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Rather than see. Overruled. <laughs> Paused. I want to direct your attention to the top right corner of the screen here. There appears to be some type of timestamp. Do you see that? Objection leading. Overruled. Do you know if that is an accurate uh, military time timestamp? Objection leading. Overruled. That does not accurately reflect the time but it occurred, no. So it was not 11, 11 p.m. at the time this video was recording? Objection leading. The person who was depicted in the video at this, describe where in the video you first saw that person. Objection leading. Overruled. And what, if anything, did you see that person doing when you first saw him? Objection leading. Overruled. He appeared to be rather agitated. Why do you say that? Objection leading. Overruled. He was moving back and forth on the porch and gesturing. Do you recall what you were wearing that evening? I do. What? The exact same set of clothing that I'm wearing today. Including long sleeves? Yes. Objection leading. Overruled. Resume playing here. Thank you. Feel right. You guys don't want your name on it, man? No. What did we see in that portion of the video? That was a sandwich. Where did that sandwich come from? His did you at some point ask 
the subject to identify himself by name. I did. What was that person's response? He identified himself as Daryl Brooks. Do you see Mr. Brooks in the courtroom today? I do. Could we please have Mr. Brooks remove his mask momentarily? Now that Mr. Brooks has removed his mask, does that change anything about your testimony today? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. It's You're leading. What is your name? Sitting on the witness stand today, do you acknowledge that Mr. Brooks has a short haircut? Objection. I don't consent to the that name. He's leading. Sustained. How would you describe Mr. Brooks's haircut today? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Do not interrupt with that further. You say that name, I'm objecting. And the jury will disregard the objection. What about when he took his face mask down? Did you notice his facial hair? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Did you notice anything different about his facial hair today versus in the video? Objection leading. Overruled. Does the hairstyle and the facial hair hairstyle here in court today uh, give you any pause or concern over whether or not it's Mr. Brooks in the video? Objection. Go ahead and answer, leading. please. Resume playing at 123. Objection noted for the record. I just used somebody's phone to call for a minute. That's all. Oh, okay. We'll mail I'll tell you what. Okay. If everything turns out to be on the up and up, life will be good and you'll be on your way, all right? Yes. I got it, guys. I got it. Suspect, I presume? Unknown. Ask him. Ask him if he knows. He was on the porch here. Yeah, I was using his phone. Bell, what's your location? I was using his phone. Okay. You're both in your WMH drone loading her down. I'm calling my phone. Any squads available for a transport? I'm on the 500. Give me a lift. That's all. I was just using his phone. Sarah, this is Schwartz. I'm leaving WSC. Where do you need me? What do you... Can I just sit up? I was... Everybody, please go on the phone. Can I please just sit up? Do you have any weapons on you? No, sir. What's your name, guy? 9209. I just told her my name. What is your name, Bruce? Yes, sir. What's your first name? Jordan. Yes, sir. 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 No this matches the description of the guy that got called on who was going door to door over here. Yeah, I was trying, where, I was trying where are your to shoes, use, man. I was trying to use somebody's phone. Where are your shoes? My flip flops is in his house. Did you hear the last thing said by the suspect on the ground at this point? Objection yes. Leading. Overruled. What did he say? Objection leading. Overruled. He said, my flip-flops is in his house. Do you know if any flip-flops were ever retrieved from the residence that this was taking place in front of? Objection speculative. Overruled. He was saying he, he just gave me now a jacket. He's identifying soft fat, lighter skin, black male, dreadlock, red shirt, blue jeans, no shoes. Yeah, I did, I did go to the house. I went to that house right there. Right down the street, right here. Where are you coming from, man? I was coming from that uh, parade down here. Okay. I know a friend Let's down here. In my Do I think that's a fabulous Stand idea. Me, uh, I can't, Mr. Brooks. Okay, I'll tell you what. No, Roll no, over on your butt. Okay, not you. Yeah, yeah. Roll over on your butt. Ah. Roll up on your knees. <laughs> Roll over on your Roll up on your knees. Okay, okay. 500 block of Elizabeth. Stand up. Right Five five three five five three Elizabeth. Ah, uh, my. What are you doing? Freaking sweet. Ah, factory here. Did I do something? That is yet to be determined. Go to the front of my squad, man. Okay. Is there anything on you? Can stick me, puff me, hurt No, 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 not at all, sir. Okay. Not at all. I don't have any weapons. Glad to hear it. Nothing like that. How did you get up over here, man? I was coming to see a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where's your friend? I don't know now. Spin your hand, spin your back, back your hand ah, for me. Ah, I had, yeah, you injured, I went, you injured at all, dude? Yeah. What hurts? When when they slammed me, my knee, I'm out, I already have an injury. Head your feet for me. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Hey, That's my ID. It certainly is. Yes.
Oh, I'm so cold. I bet you are. Can you tell us what you were doing in that brief portion of the video? Walking him to a squad car so he could be placed inside since he was not dressed for the weather. What happened once you got to the squad car? The officer whose squad he was going to be placed in went through his pockets to make sure he did not have anything that would be dangerous. And do you know if anything was retrieved from his pocket? Yes. Objection. Overruled. There were no weapons, were there? No Objection. weapons. Overruled. <laughs> We're having some skipping issues. Could we please show for the witness only uh, exhibit number 176? It is uh, still taken from my body cam footage, and in my hands are the property that was taken from Mr. Brooks. Your Honor, I would move exhibit 176 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection, rather than see. Do you know what happened to the objects that are in your hands in that exhibit? Yes, I gave them to the officer whose car uh, Mr. Brooks was sitting in. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have. Cross, please. Yes. At one point you stated the suspect was wearing jogging pants. That'd be fair to say? Yes, sir. Were the jogging pants or blue jeans? They were soft pants. They were not blue jeans. Can we show exhibit 80 again? Can you... Fast forward it a little bit. I'm not going to be sure exactly where the, to pause it at. Can you fast forward just a little bit? Can you pause? Can you zoom in a little bit and play a few more seconds? Would that mess the zoom up? Would it still be zoomed in or would it go back out? Pause. You would describe those pants as jogging pants or soft pants, as you say? Yes. And you stated that when you parked your car, and when you parked your squad on Elizabeth and West, you hooked up with two other officers? Yes. And those officers had long guns? Yes. Can you explain what a long gun is? A uh, shoulder weapon, rifle, or shotgun. You recall if it was a rifle or, or a shotgun? I did not examine either weapon closely. Are you done with this exhibit, sir? Yeah, for right now, yeah. And you made reference to finding sandwich, credit cards, things of that nature in, in the, the pants, correct? I found the sandwich. And you also stated that you found a credit card and things of that nature. In fact, would it be fair to say that that's what was in your hand on exhibit 176? There were what appeared to be credit cards cards and ID and a car key. And they were in your hand, correct? They were. So would, it, so would it be fair to say you also found those and not just a sandwich? I did not pull that stuff out of your pocket. So I'm sorry to threw me off. So you obtained that, uh, the credit cards and, and all that from a different officer? Yes. Did you find anything else? On your person? I was not the person searching you. So as far as your search, you, you just found a sandwich? Correct. And at the time, do you recall why the suspect was being detained? Yes. And what, what was the reason? Because you matched a description that was broadcast over the police radio of a suspect involved in the parade incident. In this report, did you write it yourself or did another officer? I wrote it. Do you recall writing that the suspect was being detained for investigative purposes? Yes. Any reason why you wouldn't state what those purposes were in the report? Yes, because at the time, we had contact with you. I was not fully aware of the circumstances. Would it be fair to say that you just stated why the suspect was being detained? That I just stated why this, I'm sorry, what was the question exactly, sir? You just, would it be fair to say that you just stated when, when asked why was the suspect being de detained at that moment? You at answered, that moment. Yeah, yes. at, at that moment that you, you detained the suspect. You stated because they matched the description of someone involved in the parade. Yes, sir. That's correct. But then you stated that at the, you just stated that at the time you didn't, you weren't fully aware. I knew that people had been hurt. I knew that shots had been fired. I did not know how many people were hurt. I did not know by what mechanism people would be hurt. I did not know the magnitude of the injuries. I just knew that something violent had happened. So it'd be fair to say you, you weren't in the known of a lot of information at that point. Sir. That's true. Grounds. Overruled. Would it be fair to say that you were being heard in Exhibit 80 stating that 
if everything was on the up and up, you would be on your way? That's correct. So would it be fair to say that was an inaccurate statement if the suspect fit the description of something that happened in the parade? Not at all. And what do you mean by not at all? I mean, sometimes people look like someone who did some, something and turn out not to be that person. But that was not the case here. So as far as you knew at the time, it could have been mistaken identity. It could have been, but it was not. Well, at the time, it would be fair to say at the time you didn't know. At the time, I did not know. Did you give the suspect any of that information? Objection. Grounds? I'm not sure what information he's talking about. Sustained. Did you give this? Did you give the suspect any information on why they were being detained? I said you were informed you were being detained for investigative purposes, which is an answer that's appropriate for the circumstances. So it would be fair to say that that's not really all that informative? I did not have a lot of information to give you, sir. Keep saying you. Who are you referring to? You, Mr. Brooks. Daryl Brooks. Any reason why you wouldn't tell a suspect why they're being detained? Essentially being that if you take someone into custody, they should know why they're being taken into custody. Wouldn't you agree? I can't give you information that I don't have. So why would a suspect be detained without any information, to your knowledge? Objection. Grounds and answered. Also calls for speculation vague. So would it be fair to say that you can detain a suspect without them knowing why they're being detained? Objection. This Grounds. calls for legal analysis, not factually relevant. No. Sustained. Would it be fair to say you initially responded to the 500 block of Elizabeth because of a report of, I guess you, I guess you would call it a trespassing report? I would put it under the heading of suspicious behavior. So is that why you were initially dispatched to that area for suspicious behavior? Yes. And do you recall when you got the report of shots fired? I believe that was one of the first things I heard over the radio. Do you recall ever finding out where the shots fired came from? Eventually I did. Do you recall in your reading report writing that when you had arrived at Elizabeth and West and parked your squad and began to walk down the street? That you had your firearm in your hand? Yes. And was that because of the call of shots fired, or did you feel unsafe at the time? That's because there were shots fired, and I did not know by whom. Did you get a report of anyone hit by the shots? At that time, no. I did not know one way or the other if anyone had been hurt. Did you? It had been hit. I knew people were hurt. Did you? Do you recall the area of where the shots fired was at, the, the, the general area? Somewhere in the vicinity of the parade. Is Elizabeth and West in the general area? It's a few blocks away. And you did state you didn't find any weapons on the suspect, right? Correct. Did you find any shell casings? or No. Did you have any reason to believe that the shots came from the suspect? I did not know who had done shooting. I did not know by whom. Any reason to believe that the shots came from the suspect is, is what I'm asking. I did not know. And you stated that upon seeing a suspect on the porch that they were gesturing? Yes, sir. And you also stated that in your written report that it was in the upper 30s that evening with the brisk wind. Would that be fair to say? It was cold. I was cold. Do you think that maybe the gesturing was because the suspect was cold? Objection. Grounds. Calls for speculation. Um, overruled. She may answer if she's able. I didn't know. Do you recall checking the general area around the house that you found a suspect? Yes, sir. Did you find anything around the house? Now, I guess I'm referring to where you wrote in your report you checked the likely path of travel. No, we did not find anything. And do you recall checking the pockets of the coat worn by the suspect? Yes. Do you recall how the suspect obtained the coat? I recall what I was told. So it would be fair to say you weren't sure if you were only told this information. Would that be fair to say? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You you made reference to saying you, you only know what you were told. So it would be fair to say at that time you didn't know unless you were told. Didn't know what? How the suspect obtained the coat. I asked the resident of the house you were at. Actually, I believe he volunteered to... To me that he had given you a coat to wear. And you checked the pockets of the coat? Yes. And did you find anything? I did not find anything. At what point did you learn that the suspect who was being detained would be arrested? At some point later. And it was it was another officer's vehicle that the suspect was placed in, correct? Correct. And when did you leave that scene? Not for hours. Why so long? When there is a crime scene that potentially spans blocks, everything needs to be searched for evidence. Did you write your report that, that evening? I believe I wrote it the next morning. So it would be fair to say after you had learned a little bit more information, then you wrote the report? That would be true. And in the video, Exhibit 80, the suspect gave you his name, right? 
That's correct. Was that right when you handcuffed him, if you recall? Right around that time. And did you talk to any other witnesses that, that evening besides the owner of the home that you saw the suspect? No. In the hours that you stayed on Elizabeth, did you talk to any other witnesses at all? No, I, I uh, looked through a few yards and mostly maintained a perimeter for a search. Do you recall why you looked through a, a few yards? Searching for evidence. Do you recall what evidence you may have been searching for at that time? You know, a lot of times you don't know until you find it. So do you recall what maybe you might have been looking for a weapon or anything like that? That would have gotten my attention. Did you find any weapon? No, sir. Did you learn any knowledge of uh, any ring video footage that evening? I don't recall if I viewed the footage that evening or the following day. I did at some point view that ring footage, yes. So you were, you were aware that night that it was ring footage? I believe I was aware of it that night. And do you recall initially responding to Clinton Street and Broadway first? Yes, sir. And do you recall why you responded to that location first? To see if I could help anyone. About how long did you stay there before responding to Elizabeth? Just a few minutes. No further questions. All right, thank you. Any redirect? Uh, referring specifically the to the time that you placed the handcuffs on Mr. Brooks, remember that time frame? Yes, sir. Overruled? Yes, I do. Do you recall how Mr. Brooks ended up on the ground as that was happening? I do. Can you tell us about that? Objection. Saw, saw in the video. Overruled. The witness may answer. We instructed him to put his hands up and then to get down on the ground. Did he comply with those instructions? He did. Did you or any other officer have to put hands on Mr. Brooks to get him on the ground? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. No, sir, we did not. After he was on the ground, that's when the handcuffs went on? Objection. That's correct. Leading. Overruled. Your answer again was? That's correct. At any point after the handcuffs went on, did you or any other officer throw Mr. Brooks to the ground? Objection. Leading. Overruled. We did not. How did you treat Mr. Brooks as he moved him from his prone position on the ground to the squad car? Objection. Overruled. He was instructed to get up off of prone position, eventually to his feet, with a minimum of discomfort. Did you successfully achieve that objective? Objection. Speculative. I'll rephrase. Can you, are you able to answer? Yes. In as best as one can stand a person up when they have their hands handcuffed behind their back. Yes. I'll well, have your honor. Thank you. You may step down. Statement calls next witness. State calls Officer Garrett Luling. Go ahead, attorney, and offer your witness. I want to direct your attention to the date of November 21 of 2021. You are aware of the Waukesha Christmas Parade taking place that afternoon. Is that correct, sir? Objection, Lee. Correct, I was working. Understand it's leading. There is some leeway when it's just laying foundation, so it's overruled. At some point in time, were you aware of injuries to those involved in the parade, sir? Objection, Lee. Yes. Overruled. Later that evening, were you aware of a suspect being in, taken into custody in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street. Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. All right, I want to direct your attention to that time frame, please. As in relation to when the incident at the parade occurred to when you're arriving on Elizabeth Street, can you give us a rough time frame? Um, leading. Overruled. So when you roll up on 553 Elizabeth Street, tell me what you saw. As I came up to where they were in the front lawn area between the residence and the sidewalk, they were in the midst of handcuffing and detaining a subject on the ground. And you said he was already on the ground in the process of being handcuffed, correct? Yes. Did you see any officers slam Mr. Brooks to the ground? No. Objection. Here's Say. Overruled. <coughs> no. Did you see any use of force directed towards Mr. Brooks by any police officer on the scene at that time? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. No. Did you approach Mr. Brooks? Yes. Did you speak to him? Yes. What did you say? I asked him to identify himself. At that time, he said Brooks. I can ask him to identify himself. He identified himself as Daryl Brooks. That's the name he gave you, identifying himself. Yes. Objection. And That's not what it says in the video. Overruled. At some point, do you recall getting Mr. Brooks up off the ground? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. At this point, are you probably the only officer from the City of Waukesha Police Department on the scene? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. And the other officers were providing mutual aid to the City of Waukesha Police Department? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Being the squad from the City of Waukesha and the parade occurring in Waukesha, did you take custody of Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Prior to placing him in your squad, was Mr. Brooks searched? 
Objection on consent to be in court that name. Overruled. I'm going to show for you an item that's been marked as Exhibit 176. Permission granted. Objection. Do you see yourself in that photograph? Yes. And you see uh, a set of hands on the right side of the photograph, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. You see the objects that are being held in those hands, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. Is that consistent with what you just testified as to the items you removed from Daryl Bo Brooks before placing him in your squad? Objection. Overruled. Consent to be in court that name. And it's Overruled. You may answer, sir. Do you remember Mr. Brooks asking you why he had been detained? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Thank you, officer. I don't have any other questions for you. Any cross? Yes. Go ahead. Do you recall speaking with Officer Moss that evening? Not distinctly. There might have been some radio traffic. So it would be fair to say that radio traffic, you guys spoke. I can't tell you if I had direct contact with him or if I just recall him airing particular pieces of information. Do you recall any particular bit of information that was aired by Officer Moss? You're going to have to be more specific. Do you recall Officer Moss airing that he had spoken with a potential eyewitness who indicated that they had observed numerous suspects run from the vehicle? Objection, hearsay. Grounds. Overall, I recall Officer Moss airing that there may have been more than one suspect that had ran from the vehicle. And do you recall if that if that aired information? Wait a second, back that up. You just stated that there may have been any reason why the air information said it had been that he had had spoken to a potential eyewitness. Objection, hearsay, and Grounds. false or speculation as to the words of another person. Grounds sustained. Do you recall any air information of? Descriptions? Yes. Do you recall what they were? Objection. Hearsay. Grounds. You're asking him the description of the suspect leaving the vehicle? Yeah, what, he, what he heard aired. Overruled. You may answer. I recall there being a description of a either a light-skinned black male or po possible Hispanic male wearing a white shirt, as well as the potential of a white male with curly brown hair. Do you recall what you did after hearing that air information? Yes. What did you do? I responded to Officer Moss's general location, at which point he requested that a perimeter be set up. Do you recall what, uh, what general area that was? You're going to have to be more descriptive to what general area are we talking about here. Uh, the area the area where Officer Moss was. Officer Moss was at 338 Maple. Is that the area that you responded to? Generally, yes. What do you mean by generally? I was driving to the residence when he asked that a perimeter be set up. And do you recall where you set that perimeter up? Yes. And where was that? It was loosely around that residence as well as to the south and to the west. What streets were to the south and to the west? Numerous streets. Well, I'm, I'm referring strictly to your perimeter that you sent. Do you recall which street you set your perimeter? I want to say that I was probably the southernmost squad at that time and I was at southwest and wood. While setting up your perimeter, <laughs> Did you receive any more information about the suspects who fled from the vehicle? It was all kind of at the same time. Do you recall being advised that the male black had possibly fled southbound and that the male white had may have fled in the westbound direction? Your Honor, I object. Move to strike. He's providing statements and facts that are not in evidence. They're based on hearsay. Um, the question was, did he recall being advised that? That was the question. Does he recall being advised? It's still hearsay. So who are you advised by? Officer Moss. And do you recall what you were advised? Objection. Hearsay. Grounds. Sustain. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Hearsay. What's that hearsay? And how did you end up being dispatched to the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? I heard another officer error that they were listening to Waukesha County Communications indicating that there was a person going door to door in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street. I'm sorry, you said you stated you heard that? Yes. Would that be like hearsay? Only if it's being offered for the truth of the matter asserted. If it's just explain what he did next, then no. That was the same question I asked before, Your Honor. And upon arriving at Elizabeth Street, you stated that there was already a suspect being detained at the at the moment that you arrived? No. So what did you observe when you got to the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? I already explained that upon getting there, I traveled westbound on Elizabeth Street till it ended, at which point I turned around and came back. So when I initially got there, I didn't see anything. Did you observe someone being detained at gunpoint? Not a, not upon initially getting there, no. Not not initially. Did, did at any time you observe someone being detained at gunpoint? Yes, I already said that. Do you recall what they had on? Yes. You stay for the record and for the jury what they had on? At a red T-shirts and blue jeans. Blue jeans. They, were they jogging? Jogging pants or blue jeans? It appeared to be blue jeans. And do you recall why the suspect was being detained at that, that time? Yes. 
And what do you recall about why they were being detained at that time? You were being detained for involvement in a crash in the downtown area. And upon when the suspect was detained, do you recall do you recall stating that you were confident they were either the driver or passenger of the vehicle found at 338 Maple? No, I never said that. Did you give a report uh, about what happened that evening? Yes. Did you write it yourself? Yes. So I'm reading from your report right here that you just stated that you wrote. Do you recall saying, I was confident that Brooks was either the driver or passenger of the striking vehicle? That is in my report. However, you asked if I said that. I didn't say that. That's a more or less an internal dialogue with myself saying that I felt confident that you were the suspect, either the driver or passenger in that vehicle. So it'd be fair to say at the time of your report, you were confident that it was more than one person in the vehicle? No. So why did you write the report in that fashion? I I was confident that you were involved. So would it be fair to would it be fair to say that you couldn't have written you could have written your report in that fashion instead of the fashion that you wrote it? Objection argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. Any reason why you were referred to a passenger? Initially there was reports that multiple people fled from the vehicle, from the area of the vehicle. And because of those reports is why you wrote your report in that fashion, or in the fashion that you wrote it. Objection has been answered, argumentative. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. So when you were when you observed the suspect being detained at Elizabeth Street. At that time, did you know the suspect's name? No. And you found a credit or debit card when conducting a search? Yes. Do you recall, do you recall where you found that credit or debit card? Your right pocket. In Exhibit 176, where, where it shows um, someone holding the credit card, was that you? It was what me? Holding the credit card. No. But you are the one that found it? Yes. And what else did you find? A Ford. Car key. And where did you find that? Your right pan po pants pocket. You play Exhibit 80 for the witness. The entire Can video you? or just a part of it? I'm guessing around the 4 minute and 50 or so, somewhere up in that area. The last 10 seconds, sir. Is that what you want? Yeah, somewhere up in that area. Take a look at it. Is that where you want it to start? Or further back? Uh, a little further back. How about there? Uh, 436. A little further back, I'm sorry. Maybe, yeah, for wherever it's at right now, 409. Can you play it from there real quick? You want the sound? I take it? Uh, I, I don't really think the sound is necessary. More, more so the visual. Do you remember this video? No, I don't. I didn't. That's not my body cam video. Uh, go back like two seconds. Is that this touch screen right? Is this right here the credit debit cards that you found? I can't tell what that is. Can you clear that? Thank you. Can you go back maybe two more seconds? I think it's a clearer shot. For the record, Your Honor, it's not that easy to just jump back two seconds. I mean, if he has a specific time, we can jump I mean, to a time. How would I know if I, I finally seen the, visit, the video once? Why is it that big of a deal? Can you play from right there? Right there. 435, Your Honor. 435. Now it's on 437. We started it at 435. The record should reflect that Mr. Brooks has drawn a circle around something on the still image. Go ahead, ask your question. The record should reflect that I don't consent to that name. Ask your question, sir. Around the 435 mark, you can see who, whoever this is is holding is holding the, the credit card, debit card. Is that you? Objection. That assumes the fact not in evidence, Your Honor. Sustained. <laughs> can you clear that? You said that you found a key. Where's the footage of you finding a key? I don't have a body cam, so there's not going to be video of my body cam. So if you were wearing your body cam, it would have depicted what you found during your search? No, the city of Oxford did not have body cams during this incident. So it would be fair to say there is no footage of you finding a key? I Grounds. It's argumentative, and he's already said he was not wearing a body camera. Actually, he can't he know said, possibly. It's speculation. He can't know possibly. Actually, he said the city of Waukesha didn't have body cams. He didn't say right. it, it sustained it. It calls for speculation on the part of this witness, and there's also lack of foundation as to this witness. The foundation is this mysterious key he said he found. Um, the jury will disregard that statement made by Mr. Brooks. It's not his time to testify. You will have an opportunity to do that later if you choose. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. At any time that evening, were you able to detain any other suspects? No. After the suspect was detained, do you recall how long you stayed at the scene? <laughs> Which particular part of the scene? Where you had detained the suspect. At 553 Elizabeth Street? Correct. Off my best estimate, I was probably there for about 25 minutes. And what did you do in those 25 minutes? Detaining you, as well as briefly speaking with the homeowner. 
and ultimately turning you back over to detectives. And what did you do from there? From there, I went back into a perimeter position. Would that would that be referring to the uh, perimeter that you were, that you mentioned that you had set? Yes. Uh, around the area of where Officer Moss was located. Yes. And how long did you stay at that perimeter? An extended period of time. Do you recall why you were dispatched back to that perimeter? At that time, there was a possibility that there may be another party involved. Do you recall there being ring footage uh, of the of the residents of 553 Elizabeth Street? Yes. Did you view those? Uh, did you view the ring footage that evening? No. Did you view the ring footage at all? Yes. Are you aware of what happened to the ring footage? A copy of the ring footage was emailed to me by the homeowner. Do you recall if it was multiple videos? It was, yes. Do you recall that about 16, 40 hours? I don't know. Would, would that be 440? Yes, that's 440. Do you recall directing traffic at the intersection of Barstow Street and Carina? Yes. And do you recall an officer airing anything over the radio at that time? Yes, I do. Do you recall what that was? An officer had aired that you had driven around his barricade or into the parade route. You? Who do you, who do you refer to as you? You, Daryl Brooks. And you knew that at that time? Not at that time, no. So. How would you say you? Throughout the investigation, it was determined to be. And do you recall there? Uh, do you recall it being any other air information at that time? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Objection calls are hearsay. Grounds. Are you offering it for the truth of the matter, or it for some other reason? Otherwise, for, it's hearsay. For the truth of the matter, I'm asking him. Does he recall what was aired on his radio? Well, then you're asking him to testify to hearsay, so it's sustained. Do you recall an officer indicating that a vehicle was continuing westbound and possibly blaring his horn? Objection. Grounds. Same objection, Your Honor. He's attempting to testify and offering hearsay statements into the record. I'm not attempting to testify. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained? For the reasons the state indicated. Do you recall? You can ask the witness if he heard any horns at that time. That would be different. But what someone else may have reported would be hearsay. Well, I'm, I'm reading from the report that he wrote. That doesn't take away that it's hearsay. Do you recall hearing about a vehicle blowing his horn? Objection. Grounds. Same objection, Your Honor. Overruled, he asked if this witness heard. That's how I heard the question. I think that's what you were asking. You yeah. mean at the... So I'm a, did you hear about a horn? What did oh. you hear, Your Honor? If the question was, did he, this witness hear a horn, then that witness may answer the question. <coughs> did he hear about a horn? That's different. That would be hearsay. So why don't you rephrase your question, sir? Did you hear a horn? No. And, and just so we're clear, I assume when you when he that your question meant when he was at Barstow and Karina. Because that's where he was positioned. Correct. Right? That's what you meant? Yeah. Is that was that your understanding? Yes. Okay. Very well. Next question. Do you have any other question, questions for yeah. this witness? Yeah. Any reason why it would be in your report that the vehicle was blaring his horn? Same objection, Your Honor. Grounds. So, assumes facts not in evidence. Calls for hearsay. Sustained. Have you read the complaint in this matter? No. Have you seen the complaint in this matter? No. You yourself filed a claim in this matter? No. You know of anyone who filed a claim in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Oh, overruled. He may answer if he knows. No. Do you recall whom subpoenaed you to testify here today? The state of Wisconsin. And you say state of Wisconsin. Who who would you be referring to when you say state of Wisconsin? The entity that is the state of Wisconsin judicial system. So the state of Wisconsin is an entity to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Is an entity a living, breathing human? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant, argumentative, sustained. Next question. Do you know if the state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff in this matter? Yes. An entity is the plaintiff? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Have you ever had a phone conversation? Objection. Irrelevant. Oh. With the plaintiff? About this case? About this case. Overruled. You may answer. No. Have you ever seen the plaintiff in this case? Objection, Your Grounds. Honor. This entire line of questioning is completely irrelevant. Grounds. Um, sustained on relevance grounds. Next question, please. No further questions. All right, thank you. Any redirect? Oh, nothing else. Thank you, Judge. We'll be in recess for 15 minutes. Before we bring the jury back out, if we could just maybe talk scheduling for a moment. Have you been in contact with the witnesses that were subpoenaed by Mr. Brooks? Yes, and we will need further direction on that from Mr. Brooks as far as what order he would like them in and when he wants them here. If he lets us know the order he wants them in, we can start making those arrangements on his behalf.
behalf, you would let the state know the order of your witnesses. The prosecution didn't tell me the, the order of their witnesses. Why do I have to tell them the order of mine? Because they're assisting you in getting them to court. I don't even care if it's the order, but if you say these three will be called in the morning, these three will be in the afternoon, that would be okay with me. I get what you're saying, but it's still, from, from what I'm hearing from prosecution, they're not sure exactly when they'll be resting their case. So I think they're trying to rest their case sooner rather than later, but they have some witnesses to get through, and what they're telling us is that that will be sometime on Wednesday. So wouldn't it make more sense to to start calling my witnesses Thursday then? If no, you should be ready to go Wednesday afternoon. I need you to provide that order to the state tomorrow when you come into court so that they I'm, can work with those witnesses I'll probably better. say I'm not going to provide a specific order. I'm not going to do that. Well, then I, you need to tell I'm, which day. I want to have some idea of what your game plan is for them. I get that, but I'm still, I'm still confused. Um, I, I, just, I essentially didn't know who they was calling in order. That's not really relevant. And then be ready for Mr. Marquez tomorrow. I'll be ready for that, but... All I'll right. Probably, I'll probably have an idea of who I want to, who I think should come in, but I'm, I'm not going to provide an order. Well, if he wants our assistance, Your Honor, we will do that. Otherwise, he can be responsible for getting these witnesses here himself. You've got to cooperate with this processor. Otherwise, you're going to be responsible for telling these witnesses when to come in. And so how am, how am I supposed to do that? Well, then you should cooperate with the state. I'm, I'm not going to give a specific order. Are you willing to provide the who the witnesses are by half day? I just said that. All right, then that's what gonna, I need by tomorrow morning. I said I'm not giving an order is that's what fine. I said. That's fine. I'm okay with that. So what about the, what's supposed to be going on today? How, how late do we plan to go today? Well, we'll have to see how long this witness lasts. So with that, let's bring the jury out. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction at some point? Not beyond what I've already addressed, sir. What you addressed it, you didn't prove it. You didn't verify it. It's not verified proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction yet. It's not being proven on the record. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor, that you're not going to answer that? Your request is noted for the record. I've already addressed it. Is it noted for the record? It should be noted for the record. Also, that's the tacky degree. All rise for the jury, please. We already been riding. Wondering when we go get the answer to that subject matter jurisdiction, though. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Attorney Opera, you may call your next witness. Thank you. The state calls Officer Leha. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Sir, I'd like to direct your attention to the evening of November 21, 2021. So on that evening, uh, were you aware that the parade was taking place in downtown Waukesha? Yes, ma'am. Did you work the parade? No, ma'am. Do you recall what time it was when you came on duty, sir? Objection, relevant. Around the time of 12 a.m. midnight, uh, were you asked to assist detectives at Waukesha Memorial Hospital? Yes, ma'am. Did you go to that location? I did. And did you meet with anybody there? Yes, ma'am. Objection, lady. Overruled. I met with Detective Jay Carpenter and acting detective at the time, uh, D Detective Stern. What did they ask you to do? I was tasked. Overruled. I was tasked with transporting Mr. Brooks to the Muskego Police Department. So at this point, Mr. Brooks is in custody. Yes, ma'am. I don't consent to being caught that day. And the person you were uh, asked to drive to the Muskego Police Department, do you see him in this courtroom here today? Yes, ma'am. Would you identify him, Your Honor? Objection. I, I don't consent Sir, to being caught that day. Where did you first meet Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Uh, the Waukesha Memorial Hospital, the police hold room. Uh, I'm sorry, can you um, repeat that? Mr. Brooks was talking over you. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. At the Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Where were you going to take him? To the Muskego Police Department. Why? Objection leading. Is the Muskego Police Department located in the city of Waukesha? No, Objection ma relevancy. Overruled. No, ma'am. Why did you take him back to your police department? Objection. To your knowledge, did the Muskego Police Department have a holding cell at their facility? Objection. And they were willing to uh, house Mr. Brooks there under mutual aid? Objection. I don't consent to being caught that night. You put him in your squad car? Yes, ma'am. All right. Tell us about that. Your drive. <coughs> Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. So I put Mr. Brooks in my squad car. We left the hospital. We had to go eastbound in Wisconsin. While going eastbound in Wisconsin, there was multiple uh, marked squad cars so they're with their emergency lights on. Do you know what they were doing? Relevancy. Well, Overruled. Is it just you and Mr. Brooks in the squad car? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Yes, yeah, so it was just me and Darren Brooks in the, the squad car. Okay. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. And as you traveled uh, in the area of Wisconsin Avenue, did Mr. Brooks make any statements? Objection. 
I don't consent to be in court that night. Mr. Brooks said that it looks like they were dealing with something heavy. Did you reply to him in any way? No. Did you continue on transporting him to the Muskego Police Department? Yes, ma'am. At some point, were you responsible for watching over him at the Muskego Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Objection relevancy. How long did you watch him for? Objection relevancy. Overruled. I believe we got to the jail around closer to 1 a.m. I watched him up until about 7 a.m. What kinds of things do you remember he did overnight? Objection relevancy. I know that he was fed around 2 a.m. He slept most of the night. Uh, he got up around 5 a.m. I got him water, and he asked to make a phone call to his daughter. Did you allow that? No. You said it appeared he was sleeping throughout most of the night? That's what right. I hear say. Uh, other than asking to call his daughter, did he make any other statements to you that you can recall? Objection. Relevancy. I remember he made some complaints that the room was too bright. He wanted me to dim the room. Did you turn off the lights for him? No. Objection. Leading. Were you relieved by another officer then later that morning? Objection relevancy. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. Hey, Cross. Yep. That's a yes? Yeah. Go ahead. You said that you recall checking every 30 minutes on uh, doing like well being checks, right? That's correct. And how do you know for sure that the suspect was asleep? I don't know for sure if you were sleeping. I know that the cover was over your head, and I would, every time I go and check in on you, I can see that your chest was rising up and down from underneath the blanket. So it's a possibility that you were sleeping, it's a possibility that you weren't. So it'd be fair to say you're not sure. <laughs> Answer stands, Your Honor. It's asked an answer. Objection. Um, overruled. Could have been sleepy. Probably was sleepy. Probably wasn't. But the blank was over your head. And do you recall why the suspect was not allowed a phone call? I was told that you had to wait for Detective Jay Carpenter to talk to you. Uh, do you know if that's standard practice? Not sure if it's standard practice or not, but just following his instruction. Would you Would you say it's fair to say that usually the suspect being detained is allowed a phone call at Objection. some point? Relevance. Grounds. Relevance, sir. Grounds. No. Why do you? Believe it's relevant. Um, why would why would the uh, contact to the outside world be restricted? All right, it's uh, I'll rule that it's not relevant. Sustain the objection. Next question. Do you recall what time you got to? I think it was you said the hospital to pick up the suspect. Yes, I left at 12, 12 10. I got to the hospital around twelve eighteen. To the best of your recollection, do you recall being given any information at that time about the suspect being questioned? I don't recall if I was given any information on you being questioned at that time. And you refer to a police hold room inside of the hospital? That's correct. So it's not it's not unusual for someone to be detained in the police hold room inside of the hospital? That's correct. There's an active investigation going on. So would that be the only time if during an active investigation? Usually. Do you recall where in the hospital this police hold room is located? In the hospital. Do you recall where in the hospital is located? Usually by the where the police officers park their vehicles through the ambulance bay uh, straight ahead and it's the second to last door on the right. To the best of your knowledge, do you know if those police hold rooms have have cameras? I'm not sure. Before that particular incident, had you ever been in the police hold room in that hospital? Yes. And you stated that detectives informed you that they would need to speak with the detainee before any phone calls would be made. That's correct. To the best of your recollection, did they explain why to you? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Calls for speculation. Grounds. I'm sorry. Calls for hearsay. Grounds. And speculation. Are you offering it for the truth of the matter, yep. sir? Then it's hearsay. And the detainee was turned over to an officer pulsing after, I'm, I'm guessing, at the end of your shift? That's correct. Do you recall if the cell the detainee was sleeping in that night had cameras? I'm not sure. Do you recall who did the booking process at the Muskego Police Department? Yes, I believe it was Lieutenant Andrika and Officer Clink. To the best to the best of your recollection, do you recall why one of those officers weren't doing the well-being checks? Because you were in our custody. Do you recall when you did your report, the date of it? I don't recall the exact day I did my report. Was it that same evening or was it sometime after? When you say the same evening, what, what day are you the talking same, the same evening, The same evening or morning that you ended up having to do the well-being checks at the Muskego Police Department. I don't recall <laughs> if I did it that day, but it most definitely was done shortly after. Shortly after, meaning a few days or a week or so? A few days. You don't recall if it was the 29th of November of 2021? I don't recall. When you were dispatched to the Waukesha Memorial Hospital, did you observe any FBI agents at the scene? At the scene of the hospital? Yes. No. So to the best of your recollection, it was only the two detectives that you made contact with? Yes. Can you explain what the mobile audio video recording system is? It is um, it's an in-squad camera that records um, outside of the squad car, so like in front of the squad car in the prisoner compartment. And it's a microphone that we put to our, our vest or our arm person uh, to record audio statements. So it records and it is it's video and audio. Correct. 
Did it record the detainee during your transport? Yes, it did. Besides the statements that you made reference to, did you observe or hear anything other than those statements? What do you mean? Can you clarify? <coughs> Did you observe anything strange or while the recording was taking place? I don't know what you mean by strange. Like, did you notice any strange movements by the detainee? Anything that would alarm you in any way? Nothing that would alarm me, no. Did you know the extent of the invest investigation at the time you were dispatched to Waukesha Memorial? No, my only task was to transport you to the Silver Police Department. No further questions. Any redirect? Nothing else. Thank you, Judge. Go ahead and call your next witness then, please. Call Detective Jay Carpenter. Sir, how are you employed? I am employed as a detective with the City of Waukesha Police Department. Direct your attention November 21st of last year. Were you working on that day? Yes, I was. Were you working the parade? <clears throat> I had actually been part of the parade. I marched in the parade. As and you say that you, after you finished the parade route, what, where did you go? So I went back to the City of Waukesha Police Department. After. And did you receive information while you are at the City of Waukesha Police Department regarding something that had happened at the parade. Objection leading. Oh. Officer Malo explained that a vehicle had driven through the parade route, that there were approximately 30 to 40 people down, uh, many severely injured, some possibly deceased, and that there was also an officer involved mm -hmm. shooting involved in the whole event. Uh, at that point, I went on duty and began heading towards the um, downtown area. There was a lot of radio traffic. It was The event kind of began to mold into two different forms at that point in that uh, there were numerous officers calling for ambulances in the downtown area area for the injured, but dispatch was also beginning to provide information that there was an inner individual in the area of the 500 block of Elizabeth Street and that was loitering and it was believed that may be the suspect, so I headed in that direction. Now, prior to heading in that direction, did you have any information as to why this person in that area would be a suspect? Direction leading. I uh, heard over the police radio that officers from a separate jurisdiction had come in contact with the suspect and that he was in custody. The suspect was identified in the investigation as Daryl Brooks. Now, you stated that the information that you initially received with regard to the person involved's physical description, do you recall what that was? Objection leading. An African-American male, blue jeans, and a red t-shirt. I responded to the immediate area. Mr. Brooks at that point was already in custody. He was handcuffed where he was um, taken into custody for loitering as well as being a suspect at that point as the operator of the vehicle that went through the parade route. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Overruled. At the time that you made contact with this individual, did you have any information about the, the vehicle that had been used during the parade? Objection, leading. Overruled. A red Ford Escape. Did you have any information about that red SUV prior to going to Elizabeth Street? Objection, leading. The information I recall having is that the vehicle was uh, parked over on Maple Avenue, which is about two and a half to three blocks west of Elizabeth Street, where Mr. Brooks was located and taken into custody. Okay. Objection, I don't consent to being caught that night. Did you have the opportunity to speak with an individual who was identified as Daryl Brooks Objection, at that Elizabeth I'm Street address? Mm -hmm. So as you see Mr. Brooks today, does he look different than he did on November 21st of last year? Objection. Really yes, ma'am. How? Objection. Leading. Other than any ID the identifying information, anything else turned over to you that was removed from Daryl Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being <clears throat> called that name and it's leading. There was $4 cash, but also a Ford ignition key. Now, you say that there was a suspect vehicle that had been located? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any information prior to your discussions with the defendant about who the owner of that vehicle was? Objection. Overruled. Yes, I did. And who was the owner of that vehicle? A female by the name of Dawn Woods. And do you recall what her address was? Objection. <coughs> Overruled. 4014 North 19th Street in the city of Milwaukee. So 19th Street, you said? Yes, ma'am. Objection. Leading witness. Overruled. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 172. Before we do that, um, these identifiers that you located for Daryl Brooks. Did you um, take a picture of <coughs> Yes, ma'am. I don't consent to being called that name for the hundredth time. Overruled. Do you recognize these items as those items you just described as having been removed from the defendant's person? Yes, I do. I'd ask the court to um, admit this exhibit into evidence and to publish it for the jury. Objection. Relevancy. 
Objection is overruled. Um, the address on that Wisconsin identification card is that the same address that you recited for Don Woods? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. And what was the date that that card was issued? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. And the picture on the identification card, would that be consistent or inconsistent with what the defendant looked like on November 21st of last Objection year? Objection leading. Overruled. Now, as you were at the substation, what did you do that can be... For the most part, what we were doing down there is obtaining basic booking information. So I, I, I confirmed to Mr. Brooks' first name, middle name, last name, date of birth. I obtained an emergency contact for him. And who did he say his emergency contact was? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. His emergency contact person was Don Woods. And what relationship was Don Woods to him? Objection and relevancy. It is Mr. Brooks' mother. Did you subsequently obtain a phone number for Don Woods? I did. Objection and relevancy. What is that phone number, if you recall? Objection and relevancy. When you asked the defendant for his name, what did he tell you his name was? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. Did you become aware of any video evidence? that was collected in the downtown area during the parade, capturing a picture of the person who drove the red SUV through the parade. Objection leading. I'm going to ask that Exhibit 120 be published for the jury. Is that the photographic evidence that you just testified to? Objection. Yes, ma'am, it is. And do you recall approximately was this the car being driven while the parade, in the midst of the parade, after the parade or before the parade, if you know? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. The vehicle is within the parade route while the parade is ongoing. And were you able to positively identify the driver of that vehicle? Objection. Yes, I was. Hearsay. Other than collecting the information that you had previously told us about, including emergency contact information, name, things like that, what else were you doing at the substation? Objection. Meeting. Now you had testified about some of the property that was recovered from the defendant. You stated that one of the items was a card in the name of Erica Patterson. Do you recall that? Objection. He did not say who was in the name of. Sustained. Actually, if we can pull up Exhibit 172. Okay. Objection. Hearsay. <laughs> There's no question yet. But Whose name is on that card? Erica Patterson. Overruled. Erica Patterson. Did you, at the time that you were at the substation, have any information regarding an Erica Patterson and her relationship to Daryl Brooks? Objection. That I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Objection. is hearsay. Did you later learn of a relationship between the defendant and Erica Patterson? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes, I did. And what was that relationship? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Uh, Ms. Patterson. Patterson was a significant other or girlfriend to Mr. Brooks and mother of one of his children. Objection, not girlfriend. The jury will disregard that last <clears throat> statement. Well, keep it true. Now, when you made contact with Daryl Brooks, at, or while you're making contact with Daryl Brooks at the substation, did he complain of any injuries? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. I think the may prosecution answer. is trying to be funny at this point. He complained two injuries, one to his knee, but primarily and mostly an injury to what was his right shoulder. Did he say how that occurred? Objection. Hearsay. Did you have the opportunity at any point in this investigation to review body camera footage from Officer Rebecca Carpenter? Yes, ma'am. Did you see any unlawful use of force on the defendants during that time? Objection, hearsay. Based upon his complaints, however, was the decision made to transport him to medical clearance? Yes, ma'am. And where did you transport? Um, Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Upon entering, did who was with you and Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called in name. Just leading the witness. How busy was it at the hospital when you brought Mr. Brooks in? Objection, leading. Approximately how long did you spend with Mr. Brooks at Waukesha? Memorial Hospital. Objection. I was consent to being called that name. Probably about four hours. Is that addition to the time that you would have spent with him at the substation? Yes, ma'am. Defendant appeared to know what was going on around him. When I say that, I guess, was he aware of where he was, who you were, things like that? Objection. Speculative. Did your opinion change at any time while you were with him on November 21st? Objection. Vague. During the four hours that you were at the hospital, did he continue to complain about shoulder? Yes, he did. Were his actions all Always consistent with his expression of the pain in the shoulder. Objection, speculative. No, they were not. Can you describe for the jury what you mean by that? Objection, speculative. <clears throat> how, how can he know how somebody's body is feeling? Did he get medically clear? Yes, he Objection, did. Objection, speculative. And during the time that you were with him, what type of conversation were you having? Or were you talking to him about the, the loitering? Objection, relevancy. At some point, did you decide that you were going to try to talk to the defendant about at least the loitering incident? 
Yes, ma'am, I did. How did you decide to approach this interview with him? Objection leading. Was Mr. Brooks in a room that uh, had the ability to record the conversation that you had with him? Objection. I don't consent to being called on that. Who else was with you during this interview? Detective Ben Stern from my department, as well as two federal agents from the FBI. So how did it work? Were they in the room and then Mr. Brooks was brought into the room, or how did that work? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name and is leading the witness. Did you introduce yourself? Well, you had been with Mr. Brooks previously, pre correct? Objection. Had he been introduced to Detective Stern already? Yes, he had. And how about the two FBI agents? It was at that point that they introduced um, themselves to Mr. Brooks. What was his reaction to that when they introduced themselves? Objection, relevancy. He seemed concerned, uneasy, and um, within about a minute after stating that, he questioned the agents further as to whether they were really FBI agents, and you know, he was surprised to see them there, and he had never actually seen an FBI agent. Did you record the entire conversation you had with the defendant? At that point, yes. And have you had the opportunity to review that recording prior to today, to today's date? <clears throat> I have. Um, I would like to um, admit Exhibit 81 for the court. It is the audio interview of the defendant that took place on November 21st, 2021. It's previously been addressed by this court. Objection. Um, remind me how long that is again. Entire video is 25 minutes approximately. I presume you'll have questions regarding that? Correct. All right. Uh, given that it's just before 5 o'clock, I'm going to stop for the day. We can pick up with this. Uh, tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, do not begin your deliberations and discussion of this case until all the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. With that, you are excused for the evening. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All rise for the jurors, please.